Rich Hayden. Uh, I own Virtual Reality Racing Club. We're here at Goodwood Festival of Speed. I'm here with Purple Sector Performance, which is a, a race driver training, all levels, club championship, all the way up to Le Mans level. What we do is we help them out with race simulation and driver coaching. And we do that using our Sim Race Pro simulators, which you see behind me. They're really high level simulation. And we use virtual reality uh, to make sure that the immersion for the driver is as best as it could be and giving them the accuracy to be able to follow the right lines and be uh, as accurate with their driving style as they can be. One of the things we use with that is the HTC Vive Pro headset with a real high resolution. Um, it's fantastic for driver training. It's the, it's the only way to drive a drip racing simulator. The average speed improvement or time improvement for a driver, a pro driver, going from screens to VR is minimum is, is one second a lap, and the average is anywhere between one and a half and two seconds a lap.
is there. Garnell goes into the back of Harrison, doesn't get this one. And he throws the car in. Harrison wins. Palmer second, Garnell third. He's got a car on the grass, he's got several cars off. But Santi Lotz gets tagged and he's out of the race. And off on the grass. Harrison takes the win. It's going to be Garnell's championship by my mathematics. Good morning, everybody, and a very warm welcome to our fourth weekend of Official Mini Challenge E-Series Racing with Virtual Reality Racing Club. Richard John Neal in the commentary position once again. Delighted to be joined today by MSL's Martin Jones. Martin, a very good morning to you and a very warm welcome to the comms box. Yeah, thank you very much and a good morning to you. Um, it's a lovely sunny morning here, so... I'm only 20 minutes away from Silverstone, so I guess it would have been a sunny, windy day. But uh, there you go. Yeah, oh, that's good to know. And uh, you're going to be joining us for a little bit of comment, and we'll be picking your brains as well uh, about MSL, one of our very valued series partners uh, here for the uh, entire season, of course. MSL involved with us and supporting us. Just to let you know, we're going to be hearing from Andy Ringland, Clark, of course, a little bit later on in the programme today. Race director, as ever, is... Rich Hayden, Mike looking after the technical side of things here as well. The first four weeks have gone very quickly. And uh, here we are at the end of today, of course, marking the halfway stage of our maiden campaign. There will be more and uh, there'll be more about other following series a little bit later on as this campaign progresses. Next time out, we are, I guess, after our summer break, which is what the real token package does at Snetterton. Followed by Croft, Knock Hill, and then the Brands Hatch Grand Prix circuit on the 11th of July, which is uh, appropriately the week before I'm due to disappear off on holiday, hopefully, if, if we're allowed to travel in the UK. I can tell you that the uh, drivers have already been doing a bit of free practice, as they have done in previous weeks. But here's the timetable for today, which will have a familiar look to our regular viewers. Uh, 12 noon, qualifying one gets underway. And then race one at 12.30. That grid, of course, will be decided on fastest off the front from Q1. And then we take the race results from that first race and reverse the top 10 to give us the grid for race two. Both of our races over 20 minutes. We then take a little bit of a break. There'll still be some bits and pieces for you to watch on screen, including an interview that we recorded earlier on in the week. And then 1.45 on to effectively what is a repeat of the first half of the schedule where we go into qualifying two another set of races another double header it's a double double header format of course and 215 race three of the day again over 20 minutes and the reverse grid or partially reverse grid for race four and that will conclude our fourth meeting of this season now just to remember just a reminder Last time out, we were on the, the other half of the Silverstone configuration, Silverstone National Circuit. Jack McIntyre breaking the stranglehold of Dave the Machine Marshall in qualifying, grabbing both Q1s, which was a super performance. But Dave Marshall got one back on him in race one, taking the win from the silent assassin. And uh, Alex Toth Jones in third, grabbing his second podium of the season. Race two was uh, won by Josh Hislop, who's becoming something of a reverse grid or a top 10 reverse grid expert, taking that win from Ryan Elliott and then Tobin Lee in third position. So that's the way the first half of our last meeting panned out. Dave Marshall, of course, extending his championship lead by four nine points now. Jack McIntyre is in second in the VRRC car. Josh Hislop is the top real world racer at the moment he's in third place tobin lee in fourth ryan elliott fifth from matt richards max coach seventh he's the second real world racing driver in the point standing so second in class as it were at the moment followed by josh martin alex toff jones and jordan brennan ninth and tenth in the table there alex and jordan we're going to be hearing a lot more of today because again we're having featured drivers over the course of the four races and what that means is that we'll get an opportunity to talk about those four drivers in a little bit more detail, follow what they're doing in quali and in the race. And we'll also try and have a little chat with them as well over the course of the day. But that's a little bit of a flavour as to what's going on. I had a quick look. They're still actually out there, I think, doing a bit of free practice at the moment. Just checking my timing screen. You won't be surprised to know that it's Dave Marshall and Jack McIntyre who are at the top of the screen. Although Alex Toth-Jones 
you can see on our real world entry list there is the top real world driver in terms of free practice this morning so Alex will be hoping to follow that through and we've got an interview with him in the lunch break which we'll show you uh, just talking about his aspirations for this championship and indeed discussing the current situation with driver lockdown and so on and so forth so a wealth of talent in the real world racer side of things but also we've got some of the very best sim races just running through the uh, remainder of the real world races this including uh, mini ace kim economy will fairclough who was really on a roll last week as well had a little bit of coaching running up to last week's event and was without a doubt the driver whose results proved most over last weekend's outing on silverstone national isaac smith did well he's getting up towards the podium as well so it's good to see him doing well but of course the drivers that they are all very much chasing and aspiring to match in terms of pace and sim excellent the sim lads as we've been calling them headed by dave marshall he is the championship leader james merrills he's going to be giving us uh, a lap of uh, this circuit on his sim in a, in a few moments jack mcintyre and tobin lee tom williams is running well now simon reed jordan brenham is one of our featured drivers today so we're talking to him matt richards ryan elliott kenny press tom o'farrell and uh, scott thorne and what this, of course, shows you is that we've got the very best sim drivers up against some top quality drivers from real world racing. It really is a good mix. And it's fascinating to see how the uh, racers play off against each other. So next up is that hot lap that I was telling you about, which is going to come from James Merrills. And we'll let you listen to uh, James guiding us around this Silverstone International Circuit with some real iconic parts of the track, including the legendary, of course, Hangar Straight. Absolute joy to come here, and we were looking forward to coming here in the uh, real Toka package this year, of course, as well. I'm James Merrills, driving your number 88 Merrills Motorsports car, and this is a lap of Silverstone International. So to start off with, you want to carry as much speed as you can out of club, which is the last corner, so that you'll get a good start to the lap. Turn one, Abby, use the green concrete on the left and flick it in nice and early, down to fifth, and take a big chunk of curve on the inside. Leave it in fifth and try not to run too wide for farm curve, so you'll have a good entry into village. Breaking at the curve on the left, down to third, try not to bog down or run too wide here, and then stay flat out through the loop, bring the car over to the left-hand side nice and early. Braking at the tarmac on the left, use a little bit more curb than I do here, and then use lots of track on the exit. You definitely want to get that one right so you can carry the speed down Hanger Straight, leading us into one of the best overtaking opportunities on the entire lap. If you lose time back there, you will suffer all the way down Hanger Straight. So now coming into Stow, you'll want to start trail braking just before the curb on the left, then down into fourth. Use lots of curb on the inside because the track does come out to meet you on the exit early on the throttle and just straight line it through Vale down towards the chicane. Braking at the kerb on the right, down into second gear, little bit of gas mid corner and then take a big slice of kerb on the right hander. Short shift up to third and try and keep the wheel nice and straight as you go through club. Avoid any of this green concrete on the left because it really spoils the lap. Carry the speed to finish and across the line. That's a lap of Silverstone International. I'm James Merrills, driver of the number 88 Merrills Motorsports car. Thanks for watching.
Looking forward to qualifying here for our fourth weekend of the season. And the drivers, of course, are fighting it out for a prize pool, which incredibly is worth in excess of £20,000. It is split between the classes. Here's a look at the sort of things that we're getting. We've got the Virtual Reality Racing Club sim set up, which will go to the top real-world driver. Remember, the real-world drivers will get effectively sim equipment. The sim racers, if they win, will get the chance to go into the real world. So there's very much a crossover which has been designed to complement whoever is entering the championship. Sure, some of the sim drivers have uh, maybe had a go in terms of scholarships or track days or even testing the real cars, but they're actually going to get the opportunity to go out courtesy of Mini Challenge racing one of the uh, one of the race weekends with full tutoring as well. You can see that doesn't just extend to the drive, it's the equipment as well, which of course you need to go real world racing. Um, and great to have MSL Motorsport Consultancy on board as well. Martin, thank you to you and your team for your support. And of course, you're involved with with one of the drivers that we're going to find out a little bit more about today, Alex Toff jones who looked very good in free, free practice this morning. How did you guys tie up with Alex in the first place? Uh, he's... Um... He was very, very good. He approached Brendan um, a couple of years ago and said, look, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty good at this. Uh, I need some sponsorship, though. And then they uh, they sort of hit it off and it was a it was a chance meeting. Uh, Alex uh, was very proactive and he is to do this day. He's a joy to deal with media wise um, and he's bloody quick as well, which is a it's a bonus. So, yeah, come on, Alex. And what sort of things can you, can you do for drivers like Alex? Because I, I suspect, well, in fact, I know that we've got a, a lot of people that are watching this think, thinking exactly what, what Alex Todd Jones was thinking. Maybe Martin and the team at MSL can help me. And what, what sort of things can you do for them? Well, I think the uh, biggest problem in this uh, is going to be, or well, this climate going forward is going to be raising money. Uh, the uh, sponsorship isn't what it used to be. Uh, it's now more a business-to-business -business, uh relationship to the sponsors that come through for the uh, for the young racers are their parents and people that they know uh, but it's our job and what we do help is to guide them pick the right series for them make sure that the budget is uh, sustainable because it's not just finding one year's budget it's finding sort of three to four years budget and you've got to have a career path and yeah. you've got to if you want to make a living out of it you've got to make sure that you pick the right career path if you want to do it for fun well that's great that's the way to do it um but uh, it's it's that path identification that we have the experience in doing and that's uh, that's pretty much if you come to us what's your budget you'll ask, we ask some fairly hard questions mm. how are we going to sustain it and what what are your goals and when you do come to us and we get the budget sorted out, we'll look after the budget with the teams. We'll negotiate the best thing or best deal with a team and monetize, you know, make sure that the monetary side is looked after so that you're you're focusing on your racing. You know what, Martin, it never ceases to amaze me the amount of new drivers like me who don't have a plan. They just sort of come in and, and don't think it through. But it is absolutely crucial, isn't it now, particularly as so many youngsters want to make motorsport and career. Some of them are doing their work related learning, maybe in engineering, things like that, and getting in the in the right sphere for them. But it, it's something that many drivers don't think about. They kind of think from year to year. But it is good even just to have a chat with people like yourselves about that plan going forward. Well the um the, the days when uh, I remember Mansell when he was uh, he was setting off, he, he put he put everything on the line. But back then there were more, more opportunities. Uh, it was wasn't as expensive but he put his house on the line what we're saying is that don't put don't risk your shirt if you've got no future plan a sound thinking and uh well let's have a look at the we've got the first hot laps in or is a little graphic just to remind us about alex todd jones uh, as i say i had a chat with alex in the week and it's the first time I've, I've done a an interview with him chatted to him before in and around the paddocks but I think you're going to enjoy the interview. It was it was all one take. So what you see from Alex uh, in our interview, very good, very well presented driver, very good at, at chatting and answering the questions. We we could have 
gone, uh, gone for a lot longer interview, to be, to be perfectly honest, but we needed to try and keep it within the confines of our lunch break. And he's having a good qualifying session at the moment. He is in fourth place, so he's running P2 in class for the real world racers, but it's Dave Marshall, the championship leader, with a 110.8. Now, the, the lap that we saw James Verrills do for his video demo was a 111.4. So Marshall, very quick out of the blocks with Jack Mack, Jack McIntyre in second position. Luke Kidsley is the top real-world driver at the moment. Great to see Luke getting a little bit of form. Somewhat surprised at this stage of the season with 12 races under our belts. Luke's only had one top 10 finish, which was eighth place in race one on the Donington Park configuration earlier on. So great to see him there. Alex Todd Jones looking for a third podium of the season, having had second at Donington, had a third in race one on the national configuration here. Then we've got Rob Butler. Tobin Lee is in sixth place, followed by Josh Martin. And at the moment, the lead, the leader of the two Newsham Nutters is Callum Newsham in eighth place. Then Max Coates, ninth. Josh Hislop is in tenth place. There's Callum Newsham. Callum, one of our featured drivers. He's going to be featured driver for race two. And repeating myself from earlier rounds, apologies for doing so. Uh, for those of you that know this fact, of course, is the Sun, as you probably gather from the livery of uh, former British Touring Car Championship race winner Dave Newsham. I've had the pleasure of knowing the family for a good long time. And uh, slips, well, not slipstreaming quite, but following Callum is Jordan Brennan, his Liquid Molly Norscott vending machine teammate, who is there and starting to get a fair bit of pressure is Jordan to, to try and get some budget together to, to come racing. And I know the budget's not there for them to go car racing at the moment, but he's been running very well indeed over these last few rounds and has the last two rounds, in fact, Grand Tatch Indy, Silverstone National, on the road, ever present in the top 10. The first round at Donington Park, he was had a brace of 14th places being his best results then. The best finish so far of fourth position he's going to be our featured driver in race three we get into the second half of uh, our, our qualifying but to anyone taking your fancy at the moment aside from from alex martin well it's, it's just, uh, the martial domination isn't it it's uh, he's uh, he's a very quick lad i'd love to see him a car that's for sure um this circuit is just fantastic though if it was standalone away from the uh, the con Complex at Silverstone, it would, uh, it would uh, be right up there in the UK sort of uh, rankings. Uh, Silverstone complex is just such a great place. Love the development over the years. They've done a super job, and the fact that you, you can run, I said last time, you know, two, maybe three race meetings in this place on a given day. So you could have the BRSCC running a meeting on the national circuit, maybe 750 running on, on the international circuit. Uh, and then a separate one, the Silverstone Racing Club, maybe, on, on the snow circuit, which is which is inside Complex for Racing on okay. today. We're having a look at Damien Hall, and apologies to, to Damien and his followers uh, for uh, not chatting over the graphic which came up for him in the 246. Guy. Damien is, uh, is our Barbadian race driver, as you can see, one of our sim lads, and the first Barbadian to qualify for an international esports event. Barbadian police officers, and we were kind of nicknaming him, I don't know if you've ever seen the programme, do a total blank with Anthony Williams, which was uh, Death in Paradise. Have you seen that? Maybe maybe not. Uh, I don't think the people... Uh, 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 must have, must be a lone thing that I watch. I don't watch lots of TV, to be fair. There's James Merrill. There's the guy who did our, our lap earlier on. And uh, James was one of our featured driver, drivers last time, running in the 88 car. Should have a quick look. Uh, James down in 17th place at the moment, heavy for Hamilton. But we're starting to see some changes because Max Bird, who was just below James Merrill's, Max in the 44 car, leapfrogs well into the top 10. So up User into 8th in position for out. the 44 car. And Max's results, again, if you're plotting them as a graph, they are steadily going up. So Max Bird could well find himself up towards the podium. He's he's had a little bit of cruel luck. We know his his uh, mum and family tend to be watching the the uh, feed, so they'll probably be adding some feedback in. But he's definitely is due some. Just look at James Merrill's user entered your channel. James Merrill's uh, 
has been pretty consistent with his times. Best result so far was 12th place in race two at uh, Donington Park. As you can see from the time of Dave Marshall doing what he what he tends to have done in the earlier rounds, which is quick straight out of the box, a 110.835. Jack Max second. Luke Kidsley still there in third place. So it seems to be the early laps that uh, have counted. We've still got eight minutes of this qualifying session remaining. So top five in the championship, Dave Marshall, Tim Racer, then Jack McIntyre. Josh Hislop, third top real world racer. Tobin Lee is third in the sim races, but fourth overall. Then it is Ryan Elliott, fifth overall and fourth in class for the sim racers. Matt Richards is next up as well. Matt, six overall in the championship. Then we get into a, a glut of real world drivers. Max Coates, second in class, but seventh overall in the championship, followed by Josh Martin, another real world racer and then Alex Toth Jones User is in, in ninth channel, fourth in out. class at the moment fifth in class for the real racers is Isaac Smith keep your eyes open for the one two three car he is really starting to move up now had User entered your three channel. top ten finishes last time out compare that with two in the first round uh, and none in round two so he's really settled in nicely and there is Josh in the NHS livery car of course as a reminder we are in this competition as well as offering a, a, a superb prize fund we are also raising money for the nhs um a lot of us giving out all of our time for this to raise money for the nhs and it's it's a privilege uh, honor to be doing that so there is josh hislop with uh, his uh, nhs logo on the side and here is mr coates who is working so so hard i've got to say that the effort that max has put in this is going to make him blush martin when when he hears it back that he his work has been not equal to but exceeded what most championship coordinators and uh, you know media people do i've been mightily impressed with what max has done over the uh, over the weeks just keeping us up to speed making sure we're all engaged energized and, and these communications have been super max trying to his way up towards the top 10 well there have been some other changes remember we said that max bird had got up into eight so he's now being punted back down to 11. max coates in 12th behind him then josh martin and josh is not followed by isaac smith tom williams next up in 16th place from will fairclough in 70. so uh will having a a decent run inside the top 20 as well by far and away his best round last time last two races 18th and fifth for him as we look at james mcintyre in the 47 car real world driver again had a, had his best round last time out so uh if you were to go through and mark out which drivers had best results at each meeting rather strangely the third meeting last weekend's one has has the most of those so it means that most of the drivers were, were, were getting on and, and progressing and having best rounds, which is that doesn't tend to happen in the real world, but it is happening here in this uh, in this simulated racing. So I guess while we're talking about that, I'm going to ask Martin, what what was it that got you involved? And you know, why come sim racing? We just uh, missed uh, missed the actual real world racing, and this is uh, it's a sign of the times and. The graphics are, are, well, outstanding, and we just thought, well, let's put something back in in a in a time when uh, it is difficult, and uh, our presence is there. Uh, loving the uh, loving the graphics here. Um, I'm having a few problems with uh, with my connection, but uh, I think the rest of the village must have woken up, and our broadband isn't <laughs> that fantastic. So, uh, yeah, bear with me. Um, yeah, Max Coates, you're talking about. Yeah, he's a great guy. Um, we've had uh, a couple of meetings, a couple of chats with him, and it was pretty much his enthusiasm that uh, drew us to the series. Um, yeah, yeah, all good. Anthony, yourself, yeah, very, very impressed with the setup. Uh, just a shout out to Anthony if, you, if you're watching. I hope you're having a little bit of a, a well-deserved break from the uh, commentary box. I know that Anthony's had a busy week finalising. We're not finalising, but uh, pumping out the information on the date, the revised dates for the uh, Coupe Pro Championship and, of course, the JCW. So we, we now know. I won't go through those now. But all those dates are available 
on the internet and uh, of course we're just waiting now to, to see whether when we come to August whether we're going to be racing behind closed doors or not as uh, Max Bird makes up a little bit of track look at the, as, as you say Martin absolutely spot on the graphics of the track but also the car liveries which are designed by the drivers are absolutely superb yeah it's a it's a it's a joy to watch as uh, I remember the simulators back in the day when uh, it was a tubular frame, a seat, a steering wheel with weights on it, uh, which simulated the, uh, the, uh, the, where the wheels would be. And the driver would uh, memorize a lap, shut his eyes and uh, w move the wheel accordingly just to tone his body to it. So this is just a, a revelation. It's absolutely superb, isn't it? As we look at Craig Timmins, and uh, Craig, quite a character, one of our featured drivers earlier on in the season. And he's the guy that races. A lot of guys have professional rigs, which are obviously the RRC can set up. But uh, Craig running with Logitech gear. And I make no apology for saying this again, but he's just got an office chair with some wedges underneath it and uh, a thick pile carpet, which keeps the chair in place. So I don't know if he's upgraded that, but certainly when we spoke to him a couple of weeks ago. But that just shows you this is how accessible this can be as well. Sure, a lot of drivers yeah. will spend a, a lot of money uh, on rigs. And you do that in any hobby anyway. You'll get involved. You start playing guitar. Eventually, you're going to work your way up to, you know, a Fender guitar or a Gibson Les Paul or whatever. And it's the same with sim racing. But you, the point is that you can come in and you don't need all of the state-of-the-art equipment to join in with something like this. And there are all levels that you can have fun with to join in the racing, which is absolutely superb. Craig Timmins, what a character. Uh, doing a good job. Let's have a quick look, see if we can spot him down on the timing, see where he is. My timing is not scrolling down. He's actually 22nd at the moment. So just off the top 20, which you can see on the left-hand side of screen, has a little moment off there, trying to reinvent the Silverstone Rallycross track. As we go, as we go on board with Theo Bridgman, driver from the uh, BRSCC Fiesta Championship of days gone by. Again, not, another one of our featured drivers a couple of weeks ago uh, when we were on Brands Hatch Indy, the PW Motorsport uh, car. 22-year-old from Gerrard's Cross, doing a degree in engineering at Coventry University. Coventry, of course, celebrating their football team. That's going to be a truth question. I'm not sure if you're into football or not, Marty, but we were talking about it in the week. Coventry having won. Division One. Um, the quiz, the trivia quiz question would be: Which team got promoted without playing a single home game? Because they played all their all their games in Birmingham. Yes, Birmingham, yeah. That's a uh, that's a shame because I, I'm a I, I go up to Wasps and uh, right. to, see, to see the Rico Stadium uh, sort of not with Coventry there. That's it's a bit weird. Well, it seems to have done well. It, it is a shame though, but uh, maybe they they should rename themselves Birmingham City Reserves or something. Oh, they'd love that. <laughs> So that little aside coming because Theo Bridgman Williams in the 22 car uh, is doing a degree in engineering at Cov, Cov University. Yeah, I, I think that uh, that's something else that uh, people that are looking to get into motorsport should uh, have a look at. There's some fantastic motorsport degrees out there. Um, we're going into a difficult time with uh, Formula One being the pinnacle, the ca uh, cost caps coming in. Uh, there will be more people than, uh, than are maybe needed in the sport. Um, I, I do fear for that side of it, for people coming forward. But then it's it's other series. Uh, we've been there before. Yeah. You look at Mercedes just down the road from Silverstone, 1,200 people there. Um, you you bring the cost cap budget of 175 million in there. Uh, you're going to lose a lot of people. Absolutely right. It's a, a new economy happening. Isn't there? There's going to be a lot of changes. Yeah, and I, I I don't see new teams running in. Um, there's there's certainly room for another two teams from memory to take the grids to 24, but I don't uh, I don't see it's uh, interesting times. Yeah, I, I very much agree. Blocks run down. Still, Dave Marshall quickest. We've got a few surprises, pleasant surprises, I have to say, on the uh, screen as we look at Simon Reed in the 33 car best result so far of 20th for simon running 24th at the moment simon the 33 year old from oxford works at the mini factory uh, in oxford has done two seasons of the uh, msvr day msvr track day championship and was again one of our featured drivers a little bit earlier on but 
Quali is complete and pole position has gone back to the championship leader Dave Marsh. So what's last weekend the blip? Marshall Quickest with his arch rival Jack McIntyre in second place. The top real world driver is Luke Kidsley. Well done, Luke. Great drive in qualifying from him. Alex Toth Jones is second in the real world rankings. Then it is Ryan Elliott, Josh Martin. Jordan Brennan will be on row four and a mega qualifying from Damien Hall, the Barbadian. How appropriate is that, given we're going to be chatting to him a little bit later on? Uh, and he lines up behind Jordan Brennan, or alongside Jordan Brennan. And then it is uh, Rob Butler and Tobin Lee on the fifth row of the grid. So that completes our top ten. Now, we said that the likes of Jordan Brennan and Callum Newsham normally tied together, and this time we've got three, three cars between them. But So... Uh, Fairly equal on performance, and it's going to be interesting to interesting to see how they all get away uh, off the grid. Yeah, I was uh, I was watching the minis last year, and uh, it was absolutely brilliant how close they were. Uh, we had the the Aston Martin GT4 with Alex, um, and that was a, that was a great season. GT3s and GT4s shouldn't really mix, but uh, it all adds to the spectacle. But uh, the minis, great racing. It's superb racing and a superb performance from our pole man, Dave Marshall. Well, well done, done, Dave. Back to back to form. Not that you were off form last time, but you were picked to those pole positions on the national circuit. Uh, extra practice this week. Uh, a bit of extra practice, but if if I'm truly honest, I just never really go well at national. Um, it's a track that just doesn't really suit my driving style. So come more to a technical track and, and yeah, managed to get, get the extra 10th. That's good. And obviously you're just hoping to, to get away. But what we know from last weekend, of course, is that Jack Mack gave you uh, one heck of a, well, two heck of a, two heck of a races, didn't you really last weekend? Yeah, I, th I think you know there's going to be a race on here, don't you? Um, this, it's going to be tight. Jack's definitely on the pace. Um, I mean, I think the top 10 there was separated by 0.2 of a second or something. So it's just the whole championship is incredibly close. So, yeah, just try and get my head down and uh, get a good start and hopefully bring away the win. OK, well, hopefully we'll catch up with you on the podium. Thanks for taking a few minutes to, to talk to us. And uh, well done on reclaiming the mantle of qualifying. Got to do it all again, of course, a little bit later on. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks. So great performance from Dave Marshall. Jack McIntyre in... Uh, T2, and then we've got Luke Kidsley. Super job from Luke, and hoping. Uh, I have to say, Luke Kidsley, unbelievably, only got the one top 10 finish so far, which was race one of the year. So hoping for better things from Luke Kidsley in this race, and it'll be mega if he could get a podium, but knowing Luke, he'll be keen to take the race as well to Marshall and uh, McIntyre. Well, one of our featured drivers is Alex Toff-Jones. Alex, well done. Fourth position in qualifying and our featured driver for race one. How was quality for you? Yeah, it was quite good. I managed to get that lapping on my first flyer, so I was quite happy with that and then just chipped away. Um, I actually threw away a lap about with about three minutes to go that would have put me P2, I think, as it turned out. Yeah, so a little bit disappointed, but fourth's at the sharp end of the grid, so got work to do. At least you know the potential is there in terms of the second fastest or potentially second fastest lap time. So, you know, you can take take the race to the likes of Luke Kidsley will be starting alongside you. And then the the two sim lads, Dave Marshall and uh, Jack McIntyre at front, because the race is separate, isn't it, from qualifying? It's a different mentality. Yeah, there's a lot more um, tyre saving to be going on, especially, again, the front left takes a big hit round here. Um, yeah, I don't know if I can replicate it again in the race because um, it's a completely different beast. Uh, just hoping to stay around where I am, collect some points, and then just keep the res uh, keep the results consistent. Not sure if Alex, uh, uh, Martin, there, but Martin saying end of hanging straight is the place apparently. I'll try my best. The, the, <laughs> the, the wind direction's a little bit different, so it makes it a little bit difficult going in there the, this time rather than in the practice sessions. But, yeah, I'm sure I'll try one for him. Close your bedroom window, then. <laughs> Brilliant. So, well well done, Alex. Good good performance in qualifying, fourth position. So, uh, behind Alex, we wish you well for the race, of course, Alex, as well. Thank you, thank you.
Ryan Elliott. There's a lot of our featured drivers up near the sharp end in this one. Ryan Elliott, of course, we uh, interviewed last weekend, and he is in fifth place, uh, looking to uh, try it and uh, add to the win that he took last time. And, and you would say, really, from fifth on the grid, that he could make it two on the bounce, potentially. Really, a driver who's, uh, once, you start, once you got off onto the podium, was climbing further and further. And we made the comment last time that, although it was a reverse grid race that he won, confidence-wise, you, you take that, and you take that confidence into the fastest off the front races. And that's exactly what Ryan has done this weekend, qualifying in, in fifth position. Okay, let's go to another driver in our virtual part, Ferme, which is Callum Newsham. Callum, how was qualifying for you? Hi, uh, qualifying, yeah, it was all right. Still struggling to match these top guys, but I'll see how the race goes, I suppose. And uh, I, with lockdown, I, it was your 21st birthday, wasn't it, last week? And uh, I was trying to work out from social media whether you're still at home. I don't think you are, are you at the moment? You're separate from mum and dad. I've moved down to Southampton now with my girlfriend, so I'm living with them. Uh, is, is Dad tuning in and watching this, giving you any advice? Yeah, 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 he is. So. It, it would be nice to see Dave actually out and have a go. Who's better on the stims? Is it you or Dave? Uh, right now, I think it's him. But really? I've not, I've, not, I've not raced him on the minis yet, so I'm not sure. But I think he's he's got the edge on me right now. Okay, it's only a couple of places between you and your teammate. I know we're going to be chatting to your teammates uh, as well. Do you, do you two swap notes quite a bit, or or uh, practice, or you know, sort of train together on the sims? Yeah, yeah, we do a lot of training together. Yeah, but he always seems to top top me all that little bit every now and then. <laughs> and what's your experience? Obviously, you're a real world uh, JCW mini racer uh, over the last couple of seasons. And how have you found it? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's been good. I struggled the first. Uh, the first year, but my my second year it was pretty decent, finishing eighth in the championship at the end of the year. So it was a pretty consistent year. But yeah, I'm hoping to do a little bit a little bit better this year when it yeah. starts. It is all about building experience, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, well, thanks for chatting to us. We're going to follow you through the race. Good luck for the race, mate. And yeah, uh, we'll speak to you a little bit later on. is the son of Dave Newsham, British Touring Car Championship race winning driver. And Callum looking forward to making up a few places off the grid uh, in this one, which is uh, our 13th race of the season. Hopefully not unlucky for anybody. Some race coordinators call, or usually call round 13, round 12A, if they're superstitious. That's, that's one that's been peddled at me a few times over the years up into the commentary box. But I uh, don't think there'll be any issues on track here, virtually for sure. Uh, Dave Marshall looking forward to trying to extend his championship lead again. Now, points-wise, it is significant grabbing a pole position because there are six points available for pole and six points additionally available for the fastest lap of the race as well. So immediately, we can see that Dave Marshall has extended his championship lead out now. He goes up to five, five, five points as we look at the grid for the upcoming race. The race points themselves, 50 points for a win, 44 for second, 40 for third, 37 for fourth, and third, 34 for fifth position. So plenty of points to be allocated. And just a reminder that when we had the first event of the year, Donington Park, Dave Marshall had two wins and two 11th places, but with fastest laps and poles, had a, a decent lead coming out of, of that weekend. So as uh, we look forward to the first race of 20 minutes, the uh, grid you can see there down to 26th position. And the drivers are in fact underway. So as we look at Kenny Press, driver we were hoping to talk to last time out, trying to challenge Ryan Dignan. Kenny in the number five car, uh, just being passed there by Josh Hislop. Going through as well is Tom O'Farrell and a spin for Kenny Press. Oh, he pressed a little bit too hard as the leaders come down the hangar straight for the first time. So coming towards Stowe Corner, and it is the two battlers that we had on the national configuration here at Silverstone. 
We've got Alex Tosh Jones in fourth place in the white car, and just in front of him is Luke Kidsley. And Kidsley taking a slightly different line there as they come uphill and having a look for second position. This will take the pressure potentially off Dave Barsha as they go into the game. But Jack McIntyre still there, all relatively close. You just saw the number two car, Brian Elliott, going through. But another good opening lap and a great start from Dave Marshall. Martin Jones, this guy is so fast and so consistent. He just nailed it, didn't he? Absolutely nailed it. Yeah, um, very. Yeah, very, very good. And he'll try to eat that lead out. This is what we've seen him do at the other rounds. So if he can break the toe, and he'll be hoping that there'll be a big squabble for second place. And we've seen that pattern playing out. The downside for him, though, is if he starts to get away, is he won't have too much focus on him over the course of the uh, race coverage. But coming on to Hangar Straight again for the second time, you can see it is a big three-way fight for second position. McIntyre there at the moment is the middle car. And uh, Alex Toth-Jones having a look as well. Luke Kidsley on the outside line. And then it's Josh Martin. Great to see Josh up with the top five runners as well. Luke Kinsley goes back into fourth place because Alex Toth Jones comes through into third. So Toth Jones now challenging Jack McIntyre, but Marshall's starting to build a bit of a lead. Yeah, I did say hanger straight at the end of. Good call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like uh, Dave Marshall's uh, breaking point on uh, Hanger Straight and going into the uh, going into Stowe. There's there's Armco there on the left hand side, and you count about three three red squares, and then you hit the brakes and turn in. Uh, very very good. You, the, the guy knows the he's done a lot of homework. Yeah, <laughs> I think lockdown's been fantastic for him in his bedroom. <laughs> Yeah, fastest flying lap as well, unsurprisingly. One eleven, yeah. two, three, four. Yeah, he's he's gone unless the tyres go. And looking to extend the championship lead uh, in this one. Uh, as as you say, the the big prize that's been put up is the fact that we'll get to see him in a in a race car for real at some point. That's Ethan Hamilton having a little bit of a moment. Hamilton Absolutely. is down in fifteenth, loses a place to Damien Hall, who's in fourteenth. Damien lost a little bit of ground off the start, but nonetheless still running relatively strongly at the moment as the cars come towards us. Max Bird is in the mix as well, 13. Yeah, I haven't, uh, heard, I haven't heard much about Max. He's a, he's a nice lad. Yeah, he's a, a great little peddler, a great lad as well. Good family support and has been out of luck a little bit in this championship. He was uh, qualified P2 in one of the earlier rounds and then we had some technical problems, had to run qualifying again and then found himself a little bit further back. The yellow and white car you saw involved there was Tom Williams. Welshman getting stuck in with Ethan Hamilton. Ethan, a Clio Cup winner, of course, at, uh, at Thruxton in the real world. So certainly no slouch in terms of racing. And one of the things I really admire about this championship is that we are seeing the real world drivers effectively putting their reputations on the line because the, the sim lads will have undoubtedly had more experience in these environments. So it, it really is a case of these guys saying, well, OK, we'll see what we can do. Nice shot here from Josh Martin in the 89 machine. Another real-world race of best results so far. Brace of fourth places. And uh, wasn't too happy last time out. Had a best finish last weekend of the ninth place. But other than that, pretty much regularly up in the top ten as Dave Marshall continues to build the lead. Yeah. I'll go, I'll go back on a little point you made there. I asked Alex what were the, what were the main difference between the sim and the... Uh, the uh, real life racing he said well i don't get to feel the uh, the circuit through my bottom and that was basically the only difference yeah a lot of drivers do, do sort of point that out and it, that's a key thing isn't it for real world racing is the feel of the car yeah particularly uh, braking you know you know what it's doing in the turn in and all that sort of thing it's uh, it's quite an art luke kids he's dropped back to eighth position there in the number eight car ahead of him is tobin lee race winner from uh, earlier on in the season, Tobin run the reverse grid race two uh, at Donington Park. Not been far away from the top step of the podium since then. Grabbed one podium last time out and uh, running wide there. But Dave Marshall now is, uh, I think, maybe being checked in a little bit by Jack Mack, the silent assassin, trying to come through. Alex Toth Jones still there in third. Josh Martin in fourth. A little bit of a, uh, a gap back then to Ryan Elliott and well, then there's... another gap back to Tobin Lee. There was a big one on, big off in the background. So, glad that's not real. Hmm, hope not. Jordan Brennan there in the 98 car getting stuck in. Callum Newsham 
he's trying to come up as well as we watch Luke Kidsley. Luke, uh, former Formula Jedi champion, race mini seven, Caitlin's Cleo Cart, Cart Silk, you name it, he's fast and experienced and uh, could still be on for a decent result here at the moment, matching his best result, as we said, in qualifying from eighth place, but under some significant pressure at the moment from Jordan Brennan. Jordan in the Liquid Molly back car, looking, trying to get on terms with him. Max Coates in behind as well. Max up into the top 10 now, so Coates has broken into the top 10. And in fact, now up into ninth place, as we look back from Will Fairclough in the 30 car. Again, uh, Will had a little bit of coaching. Another off there, I think, was Tom Williams yeah. in uh, yellow and white, which looked nasty. Oh, that wouldn't have been good. So when, um, they, when they swap paint or... Do, do they swap pixels in this? <laughs> I think they do. I mean, you'll see the Catherine wheel marks on the side of yeah. some, some of the cars. and uh, I just noticed that. Uh, that's that's it, impressive. Yeah, it's so good that that gets, that gets generated. Um, and dare I say it, we, we tend to see the same cars with Catherine wheels on as well. But uh, one of the people we're going to be talking to later on in the programme today is Andy Ringland, who's the clerk of the course. And we'll be asking Andy how much sorting out he's had to do after each of the rounds. One thing that our viewers won't see are the, are the various uh, championship associated chat panels where drivers can maybe lodge the protests or, you know, ask for clarification on a, a certain point. Now we've got the Newsham Nutters together, Martin, uh, right there. Callum Newsham, who we spoke to, looks on the inside line. The North Scott vending machine is going to try and go through to see the salt tire on the... Uh, edge plates of the rear wing having a look at his good friend and trying to get past Jordan Brennan but Brennan is uh, slightly the quicker at the moment certainly done a little bit more sim racing than Callum Newsham and having a good run Max Coates is ahead of them as well in the white black with yellow trim machine as well having a, a good run so once again some good racing going on here as we count slowly down towards the halfway point of our first race of the weekend Newsham comes up light has a look down the inside line but Brennan I think has got the run as they go into Stowe Corner. Oh, uh, yeah, he had the line. Yep. Good bit of uh, racing. Callum Newsham does look fired up. He didn't sound too fired up in the interview. Yeah. I think he was maybe just collecting his thoughts up about what he needed to do in the race. Yeah, if he can get a good toe out of uh, club, then that's, uh, that's <coughs> key. If he could do that, it's still Dave Marshall out front by five tenths, right nearly six tenths of a second over Jack McIntyre. Alex Toff jones a second down in third place. So we're going to see a third podium for Alex here, mirroring what he did last weekend. There's a gap back of another eight tenths to Josh Martin, who's having a good run. So Josh Martin in uh, fourth place at the moment, the 89 car, and again, mirroring his best result of the season so far. Ryan Elliott in the mix as well there. He's in seventh place. You saw going through in the number two car. And Luke Kidsley down behind him. Kidsley still in eighth place. Max Coach trying to close in on him as he ride on board with Ryan Elliott looking to climb further up the order. If he does, of course, he's chasing Rob Butler instead. He hasn't spoken too much about Rob, but Rob running in sixth place in the 74 car. And has had one podium so far this season, which was at Brands Hatch. A very capable uh, driver, the 28-year-old from Cheshire, former Irish karting champion, raced in Irish touring cars as well, driver coach to uh, several other drivers, including Reese Barr, the TCR Europe Championship, and Ryan Dignan, who's also uh, racing here. Alex Toth Jones still there in third. It's fair to say, I think, first, second, third, and fourth have all got their own track space and not really too much in terms of battles going on between those. Yeah, it's looking good. It's... Uh... I think Dave Marshall seems to be pacing himself now. Jack McIntyre with fastest lap though, Martin, which is going to be a potential six oh. points for him. I don't know. I'm guessing Marshall might or might not know that. Depends what he's got up on his screens. And uh, Marshall running with uh, Fanatec equipment. Jack McIntyre second base in the championship using Thrustmaster rigs. Third is Josh Hislop, top real world racer. He uses Fanatec equipment. Fourth place is Thrustmaster again. So Fanatec and Thrustmaster equipment seem to be de rigueur in, and shared amongst the top four places of the uh, grid as Max Coates gets embroiled here with Jordan Brennan. They, they had a, a good set too, if you can call it that, last weekend. And they're really getting stuck in again. Coates with the 
Uh, really run out of the chicane and hanging onto it at the moment, but of course Jordan Brennan's got to be mindful. He's got Callum Newsham right behind him as well. Newsham taking a slightly wider line there. Let's see as they head down into Abbey Corner where the Max is going to come. He's coming under pressure, but it wasn't a challenge there. This is a really quick part of the circuit. This is uh, this is great fun. It really, it's super fast, and you're on your limit. Um, yeah, that, that's great. The graphic there it shows the cars lifting. A lot of attention to detail in the graphics package has been uh, put together. Coach now having a bit of breathing space with the uh, Norscott car now up ahead. So Callum Newsham gets ahead of his teammate, breaks into the top 10. And this is the point of the race now where we start to speculate who's going to have the reverse pole. So at the moment, it could be Callum Newsham. He's in 10th place. Callum under pressure from Jordan Brennan. In fact, goes back in front of him. So Brennan back into provisional pole for race two. Callum Newsham will be mindful of that. And down behind them, it's Damien Hall. So Damien Hall not really in contention at the moment. There are some problems uh, for other drivers in the top 10. We could see Damien Hall knocking on the door of a reverse grid pole, which is going to be fascinating to see. Here is Jack McIntyre, though. McIntyre piling the pressure on. The fastest man on track has reeled in the race leader. So we do... Despite what yeah. we thought earlier on, have no. this battle for the lead. Race on. So the VRC car really putting the Silverstone car of Dave Barshall under big pressure. The machine versus the silent assassin, Alex Totter. Has Alex got a nickname, by the way, Martin? Uh, not that I can broadcast. <laughs> OK, and here we go side by side for the lead. And Jack McIntyre here is having a very good go. But Dave Barshall will know what he's going to do, soak up the pressure, there's a little bit of draw handling between the two of them, and McIntyre goes through, takes the lead, Jack McIntyre, the silent assassin, but he wasn't so silent there, you can see the pixel damage on the side of the car, Marshall clatters the curbs, raises two wheels, Ooh. he's going to be a little bit frustrated now, having lost the lead. Right, well, this is the time for Alex to get his finger out. Absolutely right, an opportunity here for him to close in, but what about that, Jack McIntyre, this is what I was saying to Dave Marshall. He knew that last weekend he was in a real race, a real virtual race with Jack McIntyre, who in the, the first race last weekend led for most of it. And I think it was lap 18, a couple of laps from the end, where he just made a mistake coming out of Woodcut that left the door open for Marshall to go through. But in race two, it was tip for tap between these two. And McIntyre, of course, was the man who, in his head, knows that he's got the pace to be able to race hard with Dave Marshall, which he did, and managed to go through. There is Damien Hall. Where is Damien at the moment? 13th position, racing with Max Bird, Bird in 12. Then ahead of them, Jordan Brennan, Callum Newsham back into uh, 10th position. You can see the red-topped car, head of the car with the Union flag on the roof, which is Jordan Brennan. And here is the battle between Bird and Hall, a little bit of contact there on the back end, and it didn't work out well for the 246 car, throws him off the circuit. Now, what's happened to Max Bird? Did he escape from that? I don't think he did. I haven't seen Max Bird come through. Uh, so, Bird dropping down the order again. Terrible luck for Max Bird. We caught a quick glimpse there of Kim Economy going through shot as well. There is Max Bird. So, uh, Bird now chasing Kim Economy. When is Max Bird going to have some decent luck? That was. Uh, Real hard lines for him. Yeah, just uh, just caught him perfectly as well. Rush in the rear quarter panel. When we spoke to a couple of drivers, I think the Brands Hatch round, we had some uh, contact on one of the places, and it can be caused by uh, internet lag. So it's not necessarily, uh, you know, I'm going to give you a tap to move you out of the way. There is that, that uh, thing where you can get a little bit of, of, of web lag and not see what's happening and, and certainly that was the case with the drivers we spoke to at Brands Hatch and uh, it's Andy Ringland's job of course to, to look at all that. Do you know in all my years of hearing drivers excuses I've never, <laughs> heard, I've never heard that one. <laughs> yeah I think Max Coates was the first one to, to add it to the book of excuses but uh, yeah that, that's 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 going to be an appendix now. The only, thing is, the only thing is Martin I can't argue about it because during our first round coverage um, our broadband went down. It hasn't done since. Touch wood. It says touching his head. But uh, um, it, so it was a problem for for us as uh, Isaac Smith, the reigning Fiesta BRSCC Fiesta champion, has a little uh, look there in the one-two-three car. 
Smith down in 14th place. And uh, of course, they all at this stage, if you're not in the top 10, you want to be there or thereabouts to challenge for that provisional pole position for race two. There's Jack McIntyre still up front. There is uh, Smith chasing Josh Hislop, who is again there or thereabouts. Remember, 10th position in race one last weekend. James Beryl is in behind Isaac Smith in the 1 2 3 car. Uh, and then Kim Economy, Max Bird down in 14th place at the moment after that little tap. Uh, and Damien Hall is actually behind Max Bird now, so uh, probably karma sort of sorted itself out between those two. And uh, let's hope that Damien doesn't get close enough to, to maybe have another tap on the back end of Max Bird. You can see him at the back of shot right the way down the other end of Hangar Straight as Ethan Hamilton comes through. So McIntyre doing what he needs to do to try and chop down the championship lead of Dave Marshall, fastest lap and race win. If he does that, he will pull 12 points back of a mammoth championship that Dave Marshall has. To be fair, McIntyre, I think, on the reverse grid races has been slightly the quicker, but, Mac, uh, but Marshall quicker on the flying laps and grabbing those extra points that go with that as we follow Callum Newsham, our featured driver for uh, race two, still running well. He is in ninth place. At the moment, Luke Kinsley down behind him. Luke will have pole position for race two, although Jordan Brennan will have something to say about that. And he's running in 11th place. If Jordan can get past Luke Kidsley, he would, uh, I know, be fighting for the win. We've seen him fighting for Podia in the past. As we have uh, 2 minutes 26, 2 minutes 24, plus one lap to go here on the international circuit at Silverstone. But it's now a second, 1.054 second lead for Jack McIntyre. So he won't want to be complacent in this last couple of minutes, but looking good for another win. Yeah, he called him the assassin. He's certainly done that. He just went about his business so quietly the first couple of rounds, which was why Anthony Williams coined that uh, yeah. that moniker for him. Uh, absolutely uh, appropriate. Now, are we going to see him take a, a first fastest off the front race win? If you look at his results, he hasn't finished outside the top nine in all 12 races so far that hasn't had a win fastest off the front yet, but could well do in this one as Ethan Hamilton comes under pressure from Josh Hislop and Isaac Smith. That's the trio. Then down behind them, it's James Merrill in white. Kim Economy busy chasing as well. Smith looks to the outside line. Both of these drivers grounded in Fiesta racing. I think they might have done a fair bit of that on this track because BRSCC have uh, favoured the international circuit here and produced some great racing over the years for their multi-class Fiesta championship. Uh, and you can see a little bit of drift of Jordan Brennan in 11th place, who's still busy challenging Luke Kidsley. They're just about to enter Stowe Corner, the lime green car of Kim Economy, up ahead of Max Bird, who's recovering well after his moment earlier on. The gap between first and second has come down to eight tenths now between McIntyre and Marshall. So we may well see a race to the flag yet. And it might be that McIntyre will put the pressure, have the pressure put on him as Isaac Smith goes side by side with Hislop. He's got the inside line there. But Hislop had a much better run out of the chicane. James Merrill's closing up as well. Good fight between these guys. Really good racing going on. Back of that group then. James Merrill's has a look down the inside line as they pass the uh, international pit complex. Down into the right-hander at Abbey. Left-hander at Farm. Then Village, the loot through Chapel. And then onto the hangar straight they will go. 10 seconds on the clock, so the race leader is not that far ahead of this battle. So this will be the penultimate lap of race one of four. And the gap has come down again. Six tenths between McIntyre and Marshall at the front. It's going to be all decided on the last lap for the lead. McIntyre has caught, uh, has been caught by Marshall. But whether yeah. Marshall could get back into it remains to be seen. Yeah, it would be interesting to see at the uh, end of Hangar straight into, uh, into Stowe if uh, Dave Marshall does a dive. Yeah, he, he'll be very mindful about points, will yeah. Dave Marshall, for sure. And uh, he knows he's got to keep finishing the races, so he won't want to throw anything away. He calculates things all the way. And again, that's that's uh, Anthony's moniker of the machine. He just thinks things through all the, all the while. And we're looking at the battle for the lead on the right-hand pane of our feed here. And it is McIntyre still there. Marshall trying everything 
to close in. Still Alex Toff Jones in third place. Josh Martin is in fourth. Another good result in the offing for him. No. Also looking. That's that's the guy who's going to go for it. Yeah, he's having a, a good go. Real good battling down the order with Josh Hislop getting stuck in as well. Uh, just ahead of Isaac Smith. And having a good go now. Dave Marshall is going to look around the outside line. Or is he? No, as they go into the chicane. We're waiting for the checker flag. And it's going to be Jack McIntyre. I think he's done enough to grab his first win fastest off the front. There is the 37. The VRRC car is going to take the chequered flag and the win, which he does. It is Dave Marshall, the championship leader, in second position. Third place will go to Alex Toff Jones, the third podium of the season for him. Josh Hislop there is running in 12th place at the moment. It's Luke Kidsley with provisional pole in 10th place for race number two of the day as we watch that 58 car working its way, the real world racer. He's going to have to work hard to get a reverse grid win. But uh, there he is, Josh Hislop, in the 58 car, just ahead of Ethan Hamilton and Isaac Smith. And remember, all of those drivers capable uh, of Podia. Just going to check my timing screen. It was Jack Mack who took the win and indeed the fastest lap of the race. Dave Marshall in second. They will, of course, start on the fifth row of the grid for our second race. Alex Toth-Jones is third, and uh, I'm guessing, Martin, happy with your charges progress in that? Yeah, he's uh, the uh, top of the pile for the uh, rear, uh, real world racing, so uh, that'll do for me. But those uh, those sim guys are quick. <laughs> That's uh, impressive. Yeah, they, they did a, a superb job. Just going down, just make a quick note of the uh, top 10 before they disappear. As you see, we have a virtual Park Ferme, which is on track. And it gives us a chance to have a chat with uh, our top drivers in that one. So let's whiz down there and say so many, many congrats. congratulations. Uh, and good morning or good afternoon now, of course, to uh, our race winner, Jack, Jack McIntyre. Well done. Thank you. God, that was tough. Uh, <laughs> first few laps made a couple of mistakes and was down to third at one point and saw Dave going off in the distance and thought that was it, but somehow managed to claw it back and yeah, chucked it around the outside and then managed to hold on. He came right back at me on the last lap, so that was uh, stressful, but yeah, managed to hold on really pleased. And you got the fastest lap as well, so you, you pulled 12 points back on, on your arch rival in the championship. Yeah, I think that was probably down to the toe behind him. Um, but yeah, really chuffed. Um, worked a little bit on race pace this week, so that seems to have seems to have come out nicely. Uh, what was it that helped him to close in? Were you, were you sort of, you know, aware? And does does it go through your mind that he is chasing you? Does that does that uh, play to his hands as as a chaser? Definitely, I think it's it's way easier to follow someone than to lead. Um, you can you can kind of copy their lines and drive off how they're driving and take little advantages here and there so it was yeah really tough and then it gets down you see the the white flag come out and it's pressures on and especially with someone like Dave behind you it's really tough to just stay on your lines and hit your marks but just about managed it well there we are congratulations Jack thanks for talking to us on a win for the virtual reality racing club 37 car Jack McIntyre see you for race two cheers mate thank you so well done to Jack. Let's have a word with the man who took pole position, uh, was picked to fastest lap and picked to the win. Dave Marshall, another great race, Dave. Yeah, it's, it's opposite of national, isn't it, really? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair play to Jack. Um, I got the break and thought, you know, this is my chance. Just look after the tyres a bit and try and just keep that gap. And fair play. He just put the hammer down and, and pulled some great laps back and, and got back in the draft and then unfortunately aided him to... Uh, get in the tour and get his fastest lap which is a bit annoying um, but it happens and it was nice to see that you know when the tyres were on the edge I managed to find a bit of pace at the end and reel them back in so um, looking forward to next race There was a little bit of door handing between you at one point as well and uh, how much of that do you feel? Uh, well I've got a direct drive wheel so I feel absolutely everything <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah it's it just one of them things it, it can happen and um you know, me, me and Jack, we're both respectful racers, so any nudges that do happen, it's it's not trying to push each other off the track or anything like that. It's just, you know, um, one of them things. So, 
you got to do it all again, but the reverse grid. So you got you got traffic to deal with as well next time. Yeah, but I feel it, this track out of out of all of them, you can sort of set overtakes up a bit better than you can for national. National yeah. is a bit of a a bit of a bun fight of of who's going to get past. So um, it's a bit easier to defend against multiple cars. But um, yeah, look, looking forward to reverse. Yeah, we're looking forward to that too. Well done. Great to talk to you again on the phone. Dave Marshall, championship leader and uh, close race between himself and Jack McIntyre. Third position in the race, our final podium slot, goes to Alex Toth-Jones. Alex, um, we're making a habit of having a chat, which is which is great from our point of view, and uh, a, a good result. So up from fourth on the grid, you knew you had the pace to be able to get off onto the podium, and you did it. So talk us through your race. Yeah, it, it was a little bit... Um... A little bit larry at the start it got a bit close was some good close racing and the uh the two in front managed to get a bit of a gap but as soon as i set into third started to put the consistent laps in and and they just started to come back to me just in touching distance as they started battling um but their their pace at the end of the stint was was absolutely mighty and um at least i'm closer now i can see them a little bit more so hopefully one day soon we'll be we'll be fighting for the wins We wish you well with that. Certainly got the pace there. Well done on third position. We'll see you off uh, eighth position on the grid for the uh, reverse grid race. Cool. Thank you. So our first Price. race uh, of the day. Over just to recap the top 10 for you, which will be switched around grid-wise for our uh, second race of the day. Pole position will go to Luke Kidsley. Jordan Brennan will be alongside him. And then... On row two, Ryan Elliott and Max Coates. Rob Butler and Tobin Lee didn't really get the chance to talk too much about those guys in race number one. They will be on the third row. Josh Martin and Alex Toth-Jones on row four. Row five, our first and second in the race, of course, Dave Marshall and Jack McIntyre as we look forward to our second race. But uh, initial thoughts, Martin, on, on our uh, opening race of the weekend. Yeah, it was great, wasn't it? It's... Uh... <laughs> I keep banging on about the graphics, but uh, it might be the fact that I've got a fairly new HD screen, so uh, it could be that. But uh, yeah, thoroughly enjoying it. Yeah, good, uh, good stuff, lads. Yeah, they've certainly given us some some great entertainment. We've got four more weekends to go. Uh, next weekend we're going to be racing on the Snetterton configuration, which is that's a, that's a long lap, particularly <laughs> if you're particularly if you're filming. <laughs> um, with uh, since they added, since Dr. Farmer added the the infill, which has been a super addition to, to the circuit, it uh, w what was previously, of course, a, a relatively you know sort of two long straights. You know, we 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 used to really dislike going there, but uh, he's done a great job, uh, Dr. Jonathan. He's uh, I like what he he's doing to the older circuits. He's uh, he's certainly tidying them up. Yeah, um, I must admit, it's hardly a program goes by or an event goes by where where. I'm not singing the, the guy's praises and uh, yeah, re really super investment that he's made in them. Uh, but that 300 circuit really has added, uh, you know, changed the character of the, of the place completely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've, oh, I think 1993, uh, our racing team won its uh, first Ferrari championship there. So that was, uh, that was a good memories of that place. Anthony Williams home track as well. I think they were talking about they've got a good year tyre test coming up in July, which is still trying to work out whether we'll be able to, to get to. Uh, so tracks aren't allowing any any media in at the moment. Yeah, which I was a... I was down at uh, Brands Hatch on Thursday and uh, they were they were testing away there quite happily. So it was great to hear the cars out of the circuit again. And uh, yeah, let's uh, hope everybody stays safe and we can get through this and get racing and get the spectators back. Yeah, absolutely right. Um, it, it would be nice to <clears throat> see a little bit of uh, a little bit of filming if, if there is stuff behind closed doors. We've got the cars on the grid, as you can see, ready for our second race of the day. So let's keep an eye on Luke Kinsley, of course. It's the outside line, his pole position. The lights are going on now. A long wait from race control. Superb lineup, as you can see. Our inset is Will Fairclough, but our race leaders, as they head down to Abbey for the first time, it's Luke Kidsley, who leads from Jordan Brennan, who slots into second position. It's a good start. 
We've got Max Coates up and in the mix as well, but Luke Kidsley, he'll be looking to try and get a decent result and prove on his best of eight face. Ryan Elliott, though, round the outside line up into P2, the number two car. A great move from him round the outside line. Now, has he got that consolidated or not? Yes, he has. Jordan Brennan is down to third. So, a brilliant start. Max Coates is back in fifth place uh, at the moment, but a, a good start by Luke Kidsley, who leads down the Hanger Strait, and Ryan Elliott here. Must fancy his chances of another reverse grid race win. But Jordan Brennan is closing up on him and looking on the outside line as they come into Stowe Corner. But Elliot's got the inside line there. The Fanatec back car will hang on to it. Max Coates side by side with Tobin Lee. Max, of course, has been on the podium already. Tobin's won a reverse grid race there. He's in the 55 car looking on the outside line. And the great thing for me again about Silverstone is you tend, unlike other circuits, to see less shenanigans on that first corner, talking of shenanigans, almost the curse of the commentator. Max Coates has a massive side pace moment as someone gets buried into his side and Coates dropping back down the order. Uh, well, that's typical, isn't it? You just say how nice and calm things are and Max won't be too happy about that. Curse of the commentator, indeed. Absolutely right. Anthony will be laughing if he's watching because it's been a little joke that we've had over the last few weeks. Ryan Elliott, though. Great start, made it around the outside line, and Brennan is coming under big pressure here from uh, Rob Butler, who's got the job done as well. So, or has he? Now, Butler chasing hard. Brennan's still in third, Butler fourth. Tobin Lee in fifth. Max Coates recovered from that moment and is in 11th place down behind Dave Marshall. Marshall and McIntyre separated by Josh Hislop. McIntyre ahead at the moment of the championship leader. Again, it's not going to be enough to rest him of the championship lead, but that's what he's going to have to do all the way to the closing stages of the season in order to try and get the championship lead away from Dave Marshall. But there is Josh Hislop. He's got himself now into the top 10, so progress on lap one for the 58 car. Max Coates in 10th, recovering from that moment earlier on, will be keen to get back up into the points as well. And down behind them is Dave Marshall, and Hislop has a mighty moment, wallops the uh, concrete, spanks the bank, and drops back to Josh Hislop. The moment down in 12 could have uh, ended up worse than that, I think, as we pick up with Rob Butler, still in fourth place. Jordan Brennan in third. The Newsham Nuffers are going to be shouting and screaming at him. Talking of Callum, where is Callum at the moment? He's down in 12. Oh, that's... Oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> so, Coates... Chasing Dave Marshall, who is in 11th. Jack McIntyre up into 7th place. So, Jack Mack, who made uh, a podium in the reverse grid race last time out on the national circuit from the back of the field. Uh, sorry, the back of the uh, reverse grid bar, 10th position. So, chips away. Very much the silent assassin in that previous race as we watch Callum Newsham in the 16 car, a featured driver in this one. Callum down in 13th at the minute. And he's got Tom Williams just behind him in the 19 car. Tom, the 28-year-old from Gillingham, studied at Keele University, hasn't actually got that much sim racing experience, but in, he is in the sim racing class um, and running well at the moment in 14th place. Callum Newsham's view, though, is to try and hunt down Josh Hislop. So remember, Josh Hislop is a race winner in the championship and running in third position in the championship he's been very consistent on points but uh, not having the best of days today and i think he'll be disappointed to have been outside the top 10 in race number one and down in 12th position in this one at the moment is josh that's a great graphic it is isn't it now this is a really quick bit of the circuit coming up oh here we go So Newsham still coming under pressure from Tom Williams. We get very honest indeed there. Yeah. And Josh Hislop is uh, this at the moment. I, I was just sort of trying to think, you know, why is Josh Hislop so far back being third in the championship? And he, he's actually having the, at the minute, the, the worst meeting that he's had so far. Only one race into it. But if he finishes here, it's going to be very disappointing for him. And third place in the championship could be up for grabs. Tobin Lee. But Tobin is just under 40 points behind him and he would have pulled some back in the first race so if that's replicated across the meeting we could see third position in the championship uh, taken away 
from, Josh Hislop, by Tobin Lee. There's, there's a, a fair gap at the moment between Hislop and Lee, and then Lee and Ryan Elliott, who is in the next position down, as we catch up with Alex Toff-Jones, who is in sixth place. Good progress there for Alex, isn't it? Up from eighth on the grid. So he's going in, in exactly the direction he wants to go in. Yeah, it looks like he's fancying this. Of course, the idea, just keep chipping away place by place as and uh, make a little bit of progress. He's got the race one winner, Jack McIntyre, right behind him in the VRRC car, the white, red and blue machine. Tobin Lee is there in fifth position. The pinky purple and white car about to have a little go at Rob Butler. He's just showing a little bit of notice of intent there and trying to get a wide line as they come out of the chicane, hit down towards club corner and round onto the main straight. Let's see whether Tobin... One of our top sim drivers. I think probably the best meeting for him might have been last time out because he had a podium, a fifth, an eighth and an eleventh. So he was only one position in one race outside of the top eight in all four. So he's been very consistent as Tobin. Driver comes from Bath, 19 years of age. Uh, and is an advisor for the British E-Series Association. And to how can, uh, you, how, Uni. how can you be an advisor at teen? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think they know the most about the about the racing. <laughs> I'm, I'm impressed with that. <laughs> yeah. There's uh, Theo Bridgman, the TBW, full name Theo Bridgman Williams, and uh, appropriate to to run that livery really at Silverstone, being uh, an airfield circuit. And uh, we were talking about Silverstone last time out. I remember one of the Brands Hatch commentators saying that Silverstone was. Uh, if you're a Silverstone specialist, you were good on the straight flat bits, but it's more than that. It's a great circuit. Whichever configuration you're racing on, it's super racing to be had. It's not, it doesn't have to be about undulations, does it? It's a brilliant track. Yeah, it's, uh, some people say it's flat, but it's not actually. There's some quite interesting cambers. And above all, people should come here and respect it because the place is absolutely awesome. I'm in awe, in awe of Silverstone. When, every time we come in, you just feel like you're going to somewhere very very special um it, it's it's a super day out if, you, if you've not been for real when we get out of lockdown come and come and watch some racing here whether it's club racing or the gp or whatever you can get to yeah absolutely i can't praise them enough the brdc will put one okay they were pressured into it by bernie in in the early thousands but uh, yeah fantastic so luke kidsley doing a super job out front at the moment. Ryan Elliott still in second. We've overlooked, I've overlooked Kidsley a bit, so my apologies to him. He's having a very good race here, and it will be absolutely superb to see him on the podium. We are very nearly at half distance. He's got a lead of just under half a second. Jordan Brennan looking for a maiden podium as well. Ryan Elliott, of course, no stranger to the podium these days, and indeed a race winner. But looking at this gaggle of cars, the winner, I reckon, could come anywhere from the top eight as we look at them. And that includes Dave Marshall, who's in eighth position. Josh Martin, Knight, Max Coates back in 10th, then Ethan Hamilton in 11th position. Ethan Hamilton here on for potentially his best result of the season so far. I remember he started from outside the reverse grid top 10. So Ethan Hamilton has made exceptional progress as we watch Jordan Brennan trying to close down on the second place man, Ryan Elliott. Elliott, though, got a great start and uh, looking to add yet another podium and, and maintain, if he can do it, 100% record of having a podium at each event and again that's probably the curse of the commentator and Ryan will be sending me a message if it disappears so Luke Kidsley still out front I haven't checked on fastest lap fastest lap is with Rob Butler at the moment so a new name potentially grabbing fastest lap in this race as Callum Newsham looks down the inside line Newsham busy challenging Josh Hislop gets the job done Tom Williams is going to try and pop through as well. Tom in yellow. Now, remember, we saw Josh Hislop's car clout pit wall earlier on. So, Newsham in 12th place, holding his way really pretty much about where he was in race number one. Hislop now down behind him. And Ethan Hamilton just ahead of him in blue in 11th place. Oh. So Hamilton in the 23 car. Fingers crossed that, that he gets his best result here. Again, like Max Bird, a driver who is, we know, capable of, of getting up into extremely strong positions. Max Bird is down in 16th at the moment. But uh, Ethan and Max have not had any luck at all. And their uh, fortunes really deserve to change as we approach the halfway point 
of the season. This is the leader though, Luke Kinsley still out front. Ryan Elliott in second, virtually eclipsed by him. And looking on the inside line now is Jordan Brennan, who's going to go for the inside line in the liquid molly car. Challenging for second. Is he going to get his nose in front on the inside line there, side by side? Ryan Elliott there as well. Momentarily, Brennan got his nose in front. But it's Ryan Elliott who holds P2 at the moment. Let's see whether the liquid molly car can make it through. Again, nothing rash there at all from Jordan Brennan. It was a good, honest look down the inside line. Couldn't quite do it contents himself with third place but if he looks at his mirror graphic he's going to have Tobin Lee right behind him now because as soon as you start squabbling everybody else starts to close up and closing up as well though is Jack McIntyre McIntyre in fifth position ahead of Rob Butler who's fastest man on the track in the white and blue car so this has been an interesting race to watch but Kinsley Elliott and Brennan you've got to say the top four with Tobin Lee in fourth position all together and it could Still, Martin, go to any one of, of these drivers that, that are in shot. Yeah, the, uh, I'm impressed with their manners. I, th I think Mr. Ringland's had a word with them after the last round, to be honest. Oh, right, OK. <laughs> but but No, but to be fair, you, you're right. You know, on the whole, the driving standards have been, uh, have been very, very good. We've seen the odd clout here and there, but they've uh, Andy and the team, Rich Hayden and... and uh, everybody involved have said that this has got to be real world as close to real world as we can get it and that means if you do make a rash move you will be disqualified and we we did have some penalties applied for the last round and in the previous one track limits of course is an issue uh which which gets dealt penalties also we jump starts as well so if you see a driver dropping down the order early stage of race one it's a jump start and they get three goes or three strikes for track limits as well i don't think such an issue around here but certainly was last week uh, going going into cops Oh, Luke Here Kids. We go. Yeah. This is uh, the Machine Marshal, eighth position, looking ahead to Alex Toth Jones, who is in seventh. Rob Butler, the fastest man on track, ahead of him. And a little bit of contact there. Jordan Brennan just touches now. And has he lost momentum? And uh, again, a little bit of a kiss and a couple between the two. Jack McIntyre is stuck in at the back of that boot and looking to try and come through. So McIntyre looking to try and get up onto the podium here. Remember, started 10th on the grid. And he's working hard. He's on the outside line. And it's Ryan Elliott under massive pressure here in second. Toby Lee looks on the inside line. Jordan Brennan, the man that's missed out here. Or has he? Because he looks around the outside line. But it's uh, McIntyre momentarily in second. Now drops back. And it's Elliott back there. Or is McIntyre now got the run to come through? No, it's uh, Elliott still there in second position. Toby Lee momentarily pops his nose back up into third place. Fourth position is Jack Mack. Then Jordan Brennan. Rob Butler is down in sixth place. Butler still with the fastest lap with six minutes to go on this one. That Luke a Kidsley. Overtake. It was a good overtake, wasn't it? Superb stuff. And Kidsley has broken the toe and could be looking for a decent, his previous best result, Luke Kidsley, eighth place before coming into this one. He finished 10th in race number one and he's now looking for his first win as McIntyre runs a little bit wide there in the 37 car. Jordan Brennan trying to get back on terms with him. But McIntyre read that well, knows the twists and turns well, knows where to place the car, knows track positions well, as Tobin Lee challenges Ryan Elliott for second base. Luke Kidsley, would be very brave to bet against him. Fast experienced driver, he's broken the toe, and Elliott's got all the hard work to do now, hasn't he, in second place? Down into yeah, Stowe. McIntyre's after him now, here we go. Yeah, Jack, he's been picking them off, and again, this is what Great gives move. him the... Yeah, what gives him the... The nickname so he has got the chance of coming through from 10th place to a potential podium he's still got five minutes to do it the car is a little back scarred for sure max coates is on the back of that group as well he's in 10th place max coach so second to 10th you've got to say the podium could be filled by any of those nine drivers i think there's a little gap back to ethan hamilton who's three seconds down on that group but ethan again in position where he could record his best result of the championship so far. It's the back of the group. Max trying to close in on Josh Martin, the uh, another teenager, three times Welsh karting champion, comes from Gloucester, was uh, third in the Cooper class in 2019. Uh, Max, Max is going to do a bit of drifting. Down hanger straight we go once again, and it's still Luke Kidsley 
in that lead position. Are we going to see a maiden victory for Luke as the clock ticks down? There is Callum Newsham still dicing hard with the 23 car of Ethan Hamilton. And Jack McIntyre still trying to edge his way up into the podium in the left hand shot, the race leader. Callum Newsham in the North, North Scott car dicing hard with Ethan Hamilton. So good clean race between those two. And left shot now we go on board with the battle for podium positions. Jack McIntyre having a look at Tobin Lee and trying to go down on the inside by the two sim racers virtually side by side with Ryan Elliott, another sim racer up front. Ryan, as we heard last week, trying to break into the uh, Cooper Pro class. Tobin Lee's looking around the outside line in 55, potentially leaving the door open here for Jack Mack to come up in the VRC car, but it doesn't work out. They all uh, come out of that complex as they were. Rob Butler back up in the mix as well as in fifth place. Jordan Brennan down in sixth, but look at this gaggle of cars. Kidsley is away and down the road. Callum Newsham, did he have a little moment there in the North Scott car? Ethan Hamilton getting away from him. Tom Williams trying to close up in white and yellow. That was on your uh, right-hand panel of the screen as we come to this gaggle. Fighting it all out over the podium and a slide from Jack McIntyre. Looking down the inside line, surely that will have lost in momentum. And Tobin Lee has got his nose in front into second position. Lee going for second. Elliot in the mix as well has lost it. Ryan Elliott down to third. Tobin Lee had to work so hard to pop his nose up the inside line. And now Ryan Elliott coming under pressure, big pressure from Rob Butler, who's got back in front of Jack Mack. So McIntyre back in fifth. And Rob Butler, who still has the fastest lap of the race, it does seem to be the tyres are going off quite quickly. Fastest laps being set early on and then held uh, by the drivers with two minutes 53 plus one lap on the clock. Ryan Elliott still on the podium at the moment. He'll be keen to try and get back at Tobin Lee to get that, that step further up. He'll also be keen to maintain his 100% record as we ride on board with Dave Marshall in the right-hand shot 66 car, the championship leader, looking at arch rival Jack McIntyre. And Marshall was two or three cars behind McIntyre earlier on in this race, but he's, he's just kept his head doing what he does. And he's closed in. He's got his championship rival right in front of him, more importantly, in his sights. And maybe he'll be able to take, take some points back from McIntyre. Tobin Lee, though, in the pink car, still out front for second place. Luke Kinsley still the race leader and away down the road. But look at Rob Butler all over the back of Ryan Elliott and nips down the inside line. But Elliott's going to grab the inside on the exit of the chicane and hold on to position. But Butler having a, a very good go. Butler under big pressure now. Dave Marshall. Is coming through as well. So Marshall looks like he's going to go through and manages to pass his championship rival. Incredible e-racing once again. There is Marshall who nips through. Marshall the silent assassin in this one has passed Jack McIntyre. Superb stuff from the championship leader. So the Silverstone Composites car. Great progress. Up into fourth place. And the fact that he's now passed Jack McIntyre sends a little message to McIntyre. What you did in race one, I've done in race two. There is Max Coates dicing with Alex Toth-Jones. They are seventh and eighth. Josh Martin in behind. Then you can see the gap back to Ethan Hamilton. Then it is Tom Williams. And uh, then down behind... Williams, it is Callum Newsham, our featured driver, as Alex Toth Jones has a little nibble away at the back end of Max Coates' 71 car. So, trying to climb up another position. Josh Martin having a, a good look as well. And now he's got the inside line here and a good run out of the chicane on the inside line of Max Coates. Makes the position stick. Josh Martin up into eighth place. Coates down to ninth. Saying earlier on, he really wanted to get a podium. And talking of podiums, are we going to see Dave Marshall, with this being the anti-penultimate lap, by my reckoning, are we going to see Marshall grabbing a podium on the last lap? We've got a, a great battle here with Martin coming under pressure from Coates and equally putting pressure on Alex Toth-Jones immediately ahead of him. Toth-Jones in seventh place. Oh, and a little moment for Martin collects it all up, goes across the grass. Now, Max Coates will have seen that. That will fire Coates up. Second place is now clear. Tobin Lee, 1.5 seconds clear of Ryan Elliott, who's coming under pressure. Oh, from Dave Marshall, who gets a clout from the inside line there. And 
Marshall, well, he'll be used to that. And as we heard at the interview at the end of race number one, he'll have felt that as Coates got dived back down the inside line of oh. Josh Martin. It's all going on, isn't it? Rob Butler uh, and Jack McIntyre back in the mix as well now. McIntyre bustles his way down on the inside line. And Rob Butler sees the advantage too. And Dave Marshall has been deposed and loses two places there on one corner. There we were saying that Marshall was in with a shout of grabbing a podium. He goes on to the final lap now down in sixth place. And he's going to have to perform a miracle here to get back onto podium pace. The podium at the moment. Luke Kidsley, the leader, by nearly seven seconds. It is seven now. Tobin Lee second. Ryan Elliott in third under pressure now from Jack McIntyre. And Dave Marshall at the back of that group chasing fastest man, Rob Butler. What a race we've had so far, Martin. Oh, it's fantastic. Absolutely great stuff. So Butler under massive pressure. This is the last lap of race two. Who is it is going to take the win? Luke Kidsley at the moment. No question about that from Tobin Lee in second place. So Tobin having a, a super race and the podium still not decided. Jack McIntyre has decided he wants it as Marshall looks around the outside line of Rob Butler. The left panel shot is Luke Kidsley, the race leader, into the game for the last time. And it's going to be massive congratulations to Luke Kidsley, another first-time winner in the e-racing series. Nips down on the inside line of uh, one of the other competitors. And there's the checker. Luke Kidsley takes the win. Congratulations to him. Tobin Lee, six seconds down, will take second place. Ryan Elliott, I think he's going to hang on to third. It was side-by-side, side, or very nearly side-by-side, side, up to the flag. But it's... Ryan Elliott third from Jack McIntyre, Rob Butler fifth, Butler maintaining the fastest lap of the race, Dave Marshall sixth, Alex Toffjone seventh from Josh Martin, Max Coates and Ethan Hamilton completing the top ten. I love a reverse grid race, don't you Martin? What a great race. Um, you know, I just, uh, it, was, it was going on all over the place. Kidsley did a great job there. He just got out of the way and uh, let the rest of them scrabble and uh, great racing thank you and what they'll all be looking at of course as well as the overall finishing positions is the fastest lap which rob butler banged in fairly early on and, and held on to and it really shows the pace that all of these drivers so many different drivers capable of taking podia taking fastest laps um and and ultimately taking wins and we get another another winner in the uh in the, in the top top spot another new name into the winner's circle as it were so we look at Callum Newsham who comes home in 13th position just jotting down our uh, finishers as Luke Kidsley comes down into Park Ferme his placemen will be with him as well and hopefully Luke has hit, hit the talk button. button and let's have a word with him Luke Kidsley massive congratulations home tarmac I guess for you Can you hear me, Luke? Don't forget to push the button to speak, Luke. If you can picture the scene, this is like a virtual part of Fermi. We've got Luke driving in. He'll be, in the real world, of course, we'll be taking his, his crash helmet, his balaclava off, shaking hands with the other drivers. Uh, I think he's actually with us now. So, Luke, gives a massive congratulations on your first win in the Mini Challenge UK E-Series. Oh, many thanks, many thanks. I can't tell you what it means. <laughs> We've had a bit of a struggle up until now. Can you hear me at all? Just losing your audio a little bit, Luke, so uh, feel free to speak up. But yeah, Super Race and really turned your fortunes around. We were saying coming in qualifying that your best result to date was eighth place in the first race of the year. But without a doubt now, you've turned that around. That's off your back. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, the first few rounds were definitely a bit of teething issues with my equipment. Um, I had a set of pedals that wasn't quite up to scratch. I know I'm sounding like a typical racing driver coming out of all the excuses. <laughs> uh, but no, I'm a lot happier with this setup now. Um, I'm a lot more comfortable on the brakes, especially when it's uh, up close. But yeah, I've, I mean, Donington was a bit of a... A bit of an unfortunate one. I should have got a result there. Last two rounds, I really just haven't been on the pace. So, no, I'm delighted with today for sure. Uh, I'll tell you what, mate. Don't don't apologise for excuses because actually on, on the, the kit, when you when you guys filled out the information for us, you actually put everyone else put a brand 
down for what pedals they were using. You just put awful exclamation mark on yours. So, so you, you'd identified that before racing even started. So yeah. uh, no, fair play to you. No, of course. I mean, I was, I've got to be honest, I've been really fortunate. I've got to shout out Mark Johnston. He um, he lent me his pedals and, and his wheel. So I'm still using the, the trusty thrust mask that he lent me. It's done a few miles to say the least. Uh, but I had to purchase some uh, Fanatec V3 pedals because, um, yeah, there's a, there's a massive difference for sure in that. But, uh, yeah, once again, it's, uh, no, it's a delight. Uh, Screen-wise, you use VR, is that right? Or Yeah, I do. I've got the HP Reverb. I know most people prefer the Oculus Rift, but I've kind of gone a little bit out of the box. It's a better resolution. Huh? Uh, and for me, it just, yeah, it, it, it works well when it works. <laughs> Let's just say that. It's not fully... <laughs> It's not, uh, yeah, it's not uh, like an appliance quite yet. There is still a few teething issues with that as well. But no, I, I, I'm a big believer in the VR um, sim racing. It, I think that's that's the most immersive way to do this for sure. Yeah, that's great. Well, congratulations on the win. We were absolutely thrilled to see you do it. Oh, and I've got so to apologise when you watch it back. We we, we were so far <laughs> ahead. We kind of we kind of forgot about you for a little that's, bit. Honestly, I don't mind that at all. I've got to be honest. I was looking <laughs> in the mirrors myself because it looked so mega. There was like six six abreast going down a uh, yeah. hangar straight. I was like, Luke, just concentrate on your braking area. <laughs> <laughs> It did look busy, didn't it? Uh, so Luke Kinsley, first time winner. Wonderful to see you there, the Lux Fiber Sport Edge. Thank Luke you. Kinsley, massive congratulations, well done. And we'll see you later on in the day. It did. Cheers. Let's have a word with the uh, man who finished second, no stranger to, to the podium in the Mini Challenge UK E-Series. It's Tobin Lee. Tobin, that was hard fought to get second place. Yeah, that was uh, probably the hardest fought of all of the podiums that I've managed so far, like in this series. I think that, you know, it was it was a tough ask anyway to overtake those guys. But when you had McIntyre right on your rear, I mean, it doesn't get like the pressure doesn't get any more than that. So I was really pleased to manage to make the the moves to get from fifth up to second. And to be fair, like it well played to everyone else around because the uh, driving standards when let's be frank, like doing some frankly. <laughs> like dangerous things <laughs> in many scenarios like uh, going like four abreast is not something i would like to do that often but we all managed to do it uh, cleanly uh, so it was really good and really really high quality racing overall so yeah i really enjoyed it that's good to see and you know you it means you've maintained the 100 percent record of getting a podium at every event so far as indeed our third place man did so that's going to mean a lot to you yeah for sure and also i just think um you know, I think moving forward now, I've set myself up to have, if I can get a good uh, second half of this event, then that's a good point source. So it's a really positive beginning to this weekend. Well, Toby, thanks for talking to us. Well done on second place. Great drive, and we'll see you later on in the day. Yes, thanks. And uh, third position, another driver who maintains a 100% record of grabbing a podium at each of our four events so far, Ryan Elliott. Ryan, well done. Thank you very much, Richard. It's a pleasure to be back here again. It's good to see you. That was a, a tough race, wasn't it? And, you know, I think Luke Kinsley managed to, to break the toe, but you must have been mindful of what was going on behind you all the way. Honestly, completely my fault. I didn't even win that race. It was every opportunity I had to get near him, I just threw away. He, he managed to check out in the entire pack. It was, a, it was such a good drive. But after that, it was just chaos like. Like Tobin pointed out, there was some pretty outrageous moves going on, but that's <laughs> racing. Uh, we, I managed to survive it. I know some people came off worse from it, but I'm just happy with where I'm at. One of the things that struck me about your racing, and I think I first picked up on it at Brands Hatch, was your ability to, to cope with pressure. And whatever has been thrown at you, wherever we've been racing, you've soaked up a lot of pressure. Yeah, like I say, every time I've had to... I've had to deal with some pretty tricky situations and this track's quite a hard one to to defend around. Sometimes I wasn't even necessarily going to the inside of the track because you can just hang it around the outside so easy. So it's, it's re it was really, really tough and it was more the positioning of my car for the exit of the corner because I knew everyone was just trying to get a run on me left, right and centre. But good racing, just need to keep it up until the second half of the meeting again. Um, thankfully for me, the per my closest rival for fifth hasn't being able to make it, unfortunate for him, but I'm just trying to maximise that at the minute. We well, wish you well for Quali 2, which will be coming up in around about a quarter of an hour's time, and uh, you'll be looking yeah. to improve on fifth position Quali from, from race one. So we know you're going to be, you know, near or, or, or on the podium uh, based on that. Yeah, that's the aim. 
Yeah, thank you very much. Well, well done. Thanks to uh, Ryan Elliott for talking to us. Ryan was the uh, the driver who we had our, our featured interview with last time out on the national, national circuit at Silverstone. And uh, we're going to disappear off to a break. And the reason I mention our interview is that coming up in our break, in a few minutes' time, is uh, our interview with today's featured driver, which is Alex Toth-Jones. So uh, whilst I'd normally implore people to go and maybe grab a cup of tea and a, a Frenchy pan or whatever, um, stick around and have a look at the interview because it is a, a good chat, as we had last time with Ryan. It's a great chat we're having with Alex Toth-Jones today. Uh, Martin Jones and myself, Richard John, we're going to take a, a little bit of a breather and we'll be back with you in about a quarter of an hour ready for our second qualifying for the second half of the meeting. So please stay with us and uh, we'll speak again soon. Hi, and welcome along once again to what we're now calling the, the store cupboard, as you can see with the bits and pieces behind me, but this is our home studio. And I'm really looking forward to our fourth weekend of Mini Challenge E-Series racing this weekend. And great initiative that we're getting to talk to some of the drivers to find out a bit more about them. Welcome, Alex Toth-Jones, who double podium finisher so far in the series as well. Good to see you. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, keeping busy. This is, this is helping massively, but yeah, I'm good. That's good. One of the things we wanted to do, really, we've got uh, a lot of viewers, some of who are new to virtual racing and some of whom are new to watching real world racing. So I thought for those of you who don't know you, could you just give us a whistle stop tour of your racing career so far, first of all, please? So obviously this uh, Mini Challenge E-Series is my current venture with the whole lockdown and everything, but I, I started in, in go-karts when I was 12 years old, so about 11, 12 years ago now. Um, progressed through into the Geneta GT5 Challenge for three years, which obviously follows select touring car rounds as well as British GT. Um, and then last year was very fortunate enough to make the step into British GT itself with um, with Academy Motorsport in the Aston Martin Academy um, Young Driver Program, which you know very fortunate to be part of. Um, and yeah, so it just step by step in going up the ladder, and now took a venture into sim racing. Aston Martin is a, a wow name, isn't it? It's such a fantastic brand name. And I don't think it matters how old you are, what era of racing you follow. Aston Martin is a brand that, that resonates with everybody. So it must be a real thrill to, to drive that, that mark. Yeah, um, I mean, you know, you, how many people have watched James Bond and, what, and the famous cars and Aston Martin? So it, it's such a name grab uh, straight away. It, it's very cool when you say you're an Aston Martin racing driver. Being part of the academy was a massive privilege as well. You know, being able to tap into the knowledge of the factory program and some of the factory drivers and coaches um, took me from, you know, just the entry into GTs and it kind of been such a big, big change from the, the sprint races of Ginettas. Um, yeah, it just massive knowledge and really helped me progress as a driver. And, and yeah, I think I think I learned a lot last year. It is a change, isn't it? As you say, moving from sprint, sprint racing with Janetta into the, the world of endurance racing. And another big change for you now. So why have you decided to enter the world of the uh, Mini Challenge e-racing e series? I think with, with obviously the lockdown and everything, racing has come to a stop. It's nice to see the testing and everything starting, but um, working alongside and working with MSL, who are my, my management company, as well as them sponsoring the Mini e-series, it became a great opportunity with not much exposure out there at the minute, both televised, non-televised, racing in general, um, that this was one of the best opportunities out there to get racing. And it's close and it's competitive and it's a lot of fun. Um, so, yeah, we decided to do it because sim racing in general, even before the lockdown, is taking huge leaps and bounds. And I think actually the lockdown has helped sim racing. Um, and, yeah, so it, it was just a no-brainer. You've answered my next question, which was, how, how have you found it? You said it's a lot of fun, but any other thoughts on it since joining? It's a lot of fun. It's very hard. I mean, I'm not. I'm not going to say I'm. I'm a professional sim racer as well. Um, some of the boys that do this full time are incredibly fast, and they put a lot of time and effort into it. And I think I'm spending the entire week practicing, just trying to keep up with them, because um, I don't think I don't think you can beat them on some days. Um, so it's it's really tough. There's obviously big differences between real life and sim racing, which has taken a lot of getting your head around. I mean, in a real car, you feel it all through your bum, and there's a lot more going on um, senses-wise. Whereas in the sim, 
I'm, you know, I'm, I'm practically sat in my kitchen, so I'm feeling everything through my hands and a little bit in the feet. So it, it's a different kind of concentration. And I think mentally it's as tough, if not tougher, but obviously physically it, it just lacks that edge, but that's what makes it different. So when you get hit from behind by, the, say, the likes of Max Coach, you don't physically feel it, but the car does go, sorry, Max, <laughs> um, you, you, you know what's happening because you can see, see what's on the screen. And I'm guessing a bit of, bit of feel through the wheel. Yeah, I mean, obviously, the you know, I was very, I was very lucky that MSL have helped me um, rent this sim from VRRC. So obviously, Richard, who's running the series, um, came and, and came and delivered this sim, and it's it's amazing. You know, I mean, the, the technology in sims has gone up and up and up over the past few years. So yeah, you can feel a lot through the hands, but yeah, the, the missing feeling through the bone when I get hit, it doesn't it doesn't hurt as much. <laughs> We've had a lot of positive impressions about the Mini Racing E series from from outside, from new people that are watching. But what's your impression of the the whole package as as a competitor? It's you know it, I think personally I've not done many big sim races, but the stuff I've done this is definitely up there with one of the most professional, if not the most professionally run. I mean, it just shows with the stream how you know how slick the streams are running now and. And the amount of coverage it's getting and there's people actually tuning in and watching it probably there's probably more people watching now than there would be when you know when the mini challenge and british gt was on in real life so it's just amazing to see that people's interest has been kept because the quality of the racing and the quality of the championship even in sim racing is so high i think for me it's it's the quality of real world drivers that we've got some really good personable quick real world drivers and then the new world for me was was the e-racing drivers that have that are in it and the way they present themselves equally as good as you guys the real world drivers and quick as well and it's just been fascinating watching the the, the two groups compete over the course of the the week so far which which is great getting back to my next question what are your plans obviously we're in lockdown things are changing very very slowly and gradually what are your plans for the rest of 2020 uh, and maybe next year because i think a lot of people are thinking about okay we've got a maybe a little campaign coming up but next year is going to be a full year of whatever we can do so what are your plans i mean it's quite i mean it, it, some people obviously have seasons that are ready to start again um so obviously their sim racing is going to come to come to an end we had some really good plans in place um for the start of this year we were working um obviously alongside quite a large quite a large sponsor which unfortunately due to due to all the the pandemic and everything they won't be able to be involved um this year but obviously businesses have been affected massively and i think that's probably something that we'll be seeing throughout motorsport is that it is it has affected more than more than people thought um but we are obviously always looking for new partners and, and, and new sponsors to come on board as well as join the existing ones um to try and get um a program going you know that there's it's it's hard because there's nothing concrete I know people have concrete plans. We don't have any concrete plans at the minute, but the nice thing is that there is there is opportunities and offers there. Um, it's just making it happen. It's it's especially with because obviously on from the corporate side, there's everything's behind closed doors. Um, so it does it does affect um, it does affect the opportunities out there. Um, but yeah, we're just working hard in the background. Hopefully, hopefully we get out to do something. Obviously, you know, moving into GTs into the into the endurance side of it that's that's where i want i want my career to go but i think i'll take any opportunity in a minute <laughs> well that's good to hear well thanks for taking the time to talk to us today i know these interviews are going to be a popular feature of our lunch breaks on the mini challenge racing series and it's great for our viewers to get to know another driver a little bit more which is certainly the aim thanks ever so much for talking to us super job as well mate keep up the good work on track for real and virtually and we'll see you see you soon on the podium Thank you, no problem, cheers. go out in the start of the race it's the start it's an absolute fight dog fight from start to finish
it's, it's in my blood, it's a passion. Um, I train every day for it. It's just a different feeling. It's where you feel most comfortable. Nerves actually kick in. It's when you pull up on the grid and they give the 30 second board. Um, but as soon as you get off around that first corner, that's it. it the nerves all go and it's man on the mission then trying to win the race. I think the one thing about racing that is quite unique for other sports is that feeling that you get. A lot of drivers talk about this zone or, or you know, whatever you want to call it, but it's that feeling where everything sort of clicks when you're in the car. Well, you know, motorsport finance is key to anyone that wants to, to progress and key to anyone who wants to get started. And so I wouldn't be here if it wasn't because of you know, the support that you give sponsorship-wise, but I also wouldn't be here if it wasn't because of the support that you give as a company financially-wise and the help that you can give to, to drivers like myself. It's all working as a team, um, and it works out both ways. In most sport, there's so many variables, and if anything goes wrong, your whole weekend can fall apart. high level uh, for me is the dream and right now you know, I'm going up against the best Mini Cooper drivers in, on, you know, in, in the UK at the moment. Mini is it's, it's like a massive family. Um, I know on the track sometimes we, we get heat in a moment um, but deep down I think we're all here for each other. You know it is a, it's a mountain when you start that journey in motorsport it's, a, it's like Mount Everest and you want to get to that top and you want to get to the top of the flagpole on the top of Mount Everest. <laughs> Credo have been a massive help to me. Um, they helped me buy the car, they've helped me with, with a personal sponsor. And they can build a package around your needs. If you want to raise Chinese, if you want to raise minis, they can build that around you. It's not just the finance on the race cars, it's the equipment, it's the vehicles, it's the trailers, which is the whole package to get in the actual race car to the circuit. You no, know, Credo come to all my races. Um, you know, it's, uh, I think they get more nervous than I do sometimes. Um, you know, they are a financial company, but they're more than that and they're there to get you on that grid and to support you from start to finish. Um, so it's great to have Cradle here for every, every weekend that we do. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's what they do. Um, they create that personal connection, like I say, from that first meeting. And whatever it will be, if you are racing, um, then they'll come and they'll watch and they'll be there, be thick and thin. Welcome back to the second half of our fourth event for the 2020 official mini challenge series, E-Series with Virtual Reality Racing Club. Richard John Neal here, my co-coms today, Martin Jones, and joining us in the commentary box for Quali is Clark of the Course, Andy Ringland. So that's going to be uh, an interesting chat to find out how busy Andy has been over the previous uh, few weeks we are racing if you just joined us on the silverstone international configuration today second half of round four we've had two super races so far so if you weren't with us earlier on shame on you but don't forget you can catch up online via facebook 
and YouTube. And I dare say there'll be uh, links across social media over the coming week to enable you to re-watch the two fascinating races that we have had on this wonderful circuit thus far. Race one was won by the silent assassin Jack McIntyre with Dave Marshall in second position. Dave still leading the championship. Race two, first time win in the, in the racing series for Luke Kisley with Tobin Lee in second. That was the reverse grid race. And the format that we've already seen today will be repeated in this second half of the event, which will be qualifying uh, and then that will be followed by fastest off the front race. And then the top 10 positions finishing in race one will be reversed to give us the grid for race two. And that will conclude our first half of the 2020 season. So we're on the right hand side of your screen now about to jump into our second quali where the drivers have basically got to do it all again. And it, it is quite a big ask for them to do the two 20 minute races plus 20 minutes of qualifying uh, as well now what we've seen so far particularly today perhaps more so than the other rounds is the drivers banging in very quick laps earlier on there was a little bit of moving and shaking in the later stages of the session but most of the key times seem to be being set early on so the likes of uh, Dave Marshall company going out banging in a quick time and then metaphorically I suppose virtually going back into pit lane sitting with their arms folded and uh, maybe taking advantage of, of track time just to you know to, to do a little bit more practice around the track but essentially what we're saying is most of the times we'd expect to be uh, set early on now in the second half of the meeting again we've got featured drivers and the featured driver for race one is Jordan Brennan as you can just see there the driver of the number 98 car and uh, Jordan, who is using a uh, Thrustmaster T300 RS wheel, Thrustmaster pedals as well, and uh, GT Omega rig. And in for race two, we're going to be having a word with da Damien Hall, a Barbadian police officer who is racing. And as if by magic, there is Damien's uh, details, a 37 year old. Uh, who was up in, in towards the top 10 of race number one, so starting to show a little bit of pace, but uh, had a moment, I can't remember who it was, that he had the knot with. It might be Max Bird, actually. I think it was Max who uh, yeah, had a little... It, we were talking about the, the, the sim lag, weren't we, or internet lag? Uh, yeah, at it, the time. It, it was definitely Max Bird. <coughs> yeah. so I've written the, uh, the, the sim lag down. Uh, I've got that for the book of excuses, as I said. <laughs> and what about rubbish pedals as well? We had uh, Luke with awful pedals. Uh, in, in his podium interview for for, for, for race two, Luke Kidsley. Uh, as that's, I said, that's that, that's gone in there as well. That's, uh, that's brilliant. <laughs> to be fair, as I said to him, he did actually put that down on on the information sheets that were collated for us, and he, he wouldn't even say the brand. He just said they're awful. So we kind of knew that he was maybe having a little bit of a uh, an issue with those from from the get go. <laughs> brilliant, absolutely keeping it real. Right, I've got to reboot my timing screen. But uh, as you can see from the summary that we have in the centre of your panel at the moment, it's Jack Mack, Silent Assassin, who is on provisional pole at the moment, with Dave Marshall in second. Alex Toth Jones having a good meeting. He is in third place. Isaac Smith's up to his game in his second session. The 1 2 3 car is four from Josh Hislop. He's up to his game as well. He is fifth from Ryan Elliott. A little bit of chopping and changing going on there as well, which is good to see in these early stages we've still got 15 uh, minutes to go and really a good time for me to bring in Andy Ringland Andy thanks ever so much for you know being available to chat to us so tell us a little bit about your responsibilities and, and what you do and how you approach these race days yes of course um, so hello everyone it's uh, it's a nice change to be able to talk to uh, people during a live session because of course normally I am up in race control as the guardian of the 30 odd lives that are on circuit, making sure that if something goes wrong, the correct intervention and the correct medical services are sent. Um, there's obviously some very significant differences um, between sim racing and normal racing. Normal racing, we have a series of marshals there that are there to protect the, uh, the, the safety of the drivers uh, to help in an incident, but also to report to me if there are any um, contacts, if uh, there is poor driving standards, etc., on circuit. And obviously that is missing from this. 
because obviously the safety element of this is far reduced. I think it's uh, the most major incident we might have is someone getting a bit of a sprained thumb from the force feedback on the uh, on the steering wheel. <laughs> Absolutely. But um, so the key difference is really um, obviously there is that safety side of it. I am now not needed in race control. We've got uh, Rich Hayden, the race director, who is um, running things from the server perspective and indeed keeping his BDI on the drivers as I do. But he's got direct contact with them and he will uh, observe the driving standards. Um, so the safety part of my role, which is real world, actually doesn't exist in this. Um, the judicial side, which is probably the uh, less enjoyable uh, part of the two-part job, um, is the side that I actually um, get involved with. And the purpose of that, of course, is to keep the playing field level. Um, so if a driver feels aggrieved, they can put a protest in. That protest will make its way through the ether uh, of email into uh, my inbox. I'll then spend a lot of time going through the replays and finding out whether it is justified that the uh, protest be um, put in, whether a penalty is required. And unfortunately, sometimes I do have to apply those penalties. Um, as with the real world, the championship wants us to keep this fairly robust so that drivers don't get complacent in the real world. Um, so those penalties can be fairly robust. Uh, typically, they are time penalties to switch positions um, if uh, a, an advantage has been gained through contact or poor driving standards um, or indeed a disqualification from the race if their driving is uh, uh, justifies that. Um, we do have a number of drivers under observation at the moment um, due to some of the driving standards and uh, that is not uncommon to the real world. Um, it's to be expected in racing that is so close and so you know we're playing with very very fine margins and at the end of the day we're all humans behind these uh, behind the wheels of these cars so mistakes do get made um what some people thought were um pockets of opportunity can close up incredibly quickly um which can result in contact um which is obviously very much unfortunate um, so, interestingly, the driving standards are incredibly similar. We are trying to find mechanisms and we have got mechanisms in place and we keep tweaking those mechanisms um, to kind of keep that in check. Uh, this is obviously very much a developing thing as we go through. Um, so, it's interesting actually to see how similar the driving standards are in real life. Um, of course, another big difference is the fact that in many of the incidents, these drivers can just drive away from the incident. We don't have them stuck in gravel um, and having to get the safety car out um, or getting JCBs out to uh, to pull them out the kitty litter. So um, that does actually result in many more incidents because where you would normally have a race stop or a, um, a curtailment of it due to the safety car, um, those don't exist so there is actually more time for incidents to occur so whilst the driving standards are the same we do actually see more incidents um, I had a quick look before I uh, jumped on the stream I had a quick look at what I've dealt with so far and uh, in the e-series I've dealt with 35 protests and I've given 21 penalties now in a typical race um, you would expect to have maybe three possibly four reports from marshals about contact and possibly one or two protests so in terms of the rate of accumulation, I think we're slightly higher um, in SimWorld, but I think that's more due to the time that we have less time of the racing curtailed through the incidents. It's fascinating stats, Andy. And uh, you are um, a, a real racer as well, aren't you? You actually, you race in the Mini Challenge? Yes, absolutely. So uh, last year actually was my, my first season um, in the Mini Coopers. Um, I had a bit of a strange introduction or a, uh, an abnormal introduction to uh, motorsport. I actually came in through a Formula student door, um, which uh, uh, pricked my interest and, uh, and kept me involved in motorsport. And that's then developed um, through the officiating side. Um, obviously, as you go through your career and you meet more people, you get more chance to uh, get a bit of budget behind you. Um, and I managed to get enough budget to go racing in the Coopers. 
last season in which I finished seventh, which uh, I'm fairly pleased with, uh, given that it was my first season. It was quite a baptism of fire and indeed a very much eye-opener. I clerk very differently now um, than I did um, prior to uh, actually competing in that. And I'm, I can't wait actually to get back out um, this season as well. I'm just uh, in the middle of designing delivery, which should be fairly interesting for my car this season. I like that, Andy. It's uh, yeah. the uh, the, uh, the poacher gamekeeper sort of scenario. In, <laughs> indeed, it's uh, it has been reminded to me uh, on on many occasion, and uh, it it raises many uh, wry smiles when some of the drivers walk into race control and see me in there. Yeah, sitting there in your race seat. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that has actually happened, unfortunately. But uh, like I say, I uh, I, I wouldn't uh, ask anyone to do anything that I'm not willing to do, and I have indeed got the bruises from that in terms of penalties. Well, keep up the good work. It's uh, it's a side of uh, the sport that's very rarely appreciated, but uh, it's essential that you uh, you and your team keep doing a good job on it. It's uh, much appreciated. Uh, thank you very much for that, and it's uh, I think it's worth saying actually that very very few of the people that actually make a meeting run have any kind of monetary um, reward from it. Um, only at the highest levels do you start getting um, some significant uh, expenses covered, etc. So, you know, these people, including myself, uh, do it for the love of the sport and indeed to protect the lives of those people that are taking part in the sport. Um, and without it, it can't run. So I am often on the radio to the marshals, particularly after some very stressful days, which we have had, um, thanking them for their input um, and uh, in hopefully inspiring them to come back after what has probably been quite a uh, tortuous experience for them. Yeah. Oh, well done. I'll take my hat off to you. I mean, broadcast-wise, my, my first broadcast, sporting-wise, were, were in football and... I, I was quite lucky before getting into commentary, working on the media side for a football club, and one of the jobs there was was actually talking to the the, the match officials. So I got a very good insight into the fact that th these people are, you know, are there for the love of it as much as anyone else, you know. And I used to I used to be galled by the amount of grief that football officials get, referees, you know, and uh, assistant referees get so much grief. For a job that they're really doing for the very much for the love of the sport and just trying to keep everybody safe and all, all the rules played for. I've not seen as much stick being leveled out at, at Clark's, but I have seen some very unfair comments made to Clark's over the course of my racing involvement. So um, you have my utmost respect for what you do. Absolutely, football football referees uh, they're a different breed. They must be masochistic. <laughs> So uh, qualified. Thanks, Andy. That's really, really good insight. And uh, oh yeah, that's me. What, what a lot of what a lot of the 35 protests resulting in 21 penalties. I mean, that, that really does. And you've got to watch the footage and, and go through that. It's a heck of a lot of work. Yeah, it's probably about a, f a full working day's worth of work. Wow. Um, fortunately, um, in the in in sim world, I don't have quite the time constraints I do at a race meeting. Obviously, no. at a race meeting, at the end of one race, you've probably got two hours before the next race each protest or each incident typically takes about 15 20 minutes to review and then come up with your decision and do the paperwork around that so you've actually got a very limited time to deal with some of this so it can get very busy up in race control um, in the real world whereas sim world i have got um, a good couple of days um, to turn these things around before they actually become a problem because um, the protest period actually um, in order to keep the live stream running and to not have big gaps in the racing, um, all the protest process is, is uh, served at the end of the uh, at the end of the meeting, um, and then obviously the rectifications are made, um, which it brings in its own implications to a degree, um, in that you can't rectify something immediately, um, and there are obviously knock-on effects then through the remainder of the meeting. Um, but it certainly gives me more time and it's yeah it's about one full working day to clear the uh, backlog sometimes particularly if you get very complex um, incidents because some of these incidents can actually start two or three corners back from where the big collision is yeah so something that uh, again many people don't don't really consider or, or think about but yeah that's that's an amazing 
amount of, of commitment that you have to put in. Yeah. In uh, fact, what I uh, what I would say is a, a thank you to uh, to you guys and and your fellow colleagues that do the same job at all the race circuits across the across the world because uh, a big indicator to us that something's about to happen is the tone and and r tone of your voice and the rate at which you're speaking and as you get more excited we start looking at the monitors a bit more closely i don't know what you're talking about i'm monotone the entire time <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's that is really interesting i've never thought of that actually never thought of. We're, we're signed on officials as well i've actually been called in to uh you know to to give my take on stuff i think uh, first time was at Cabwell Park and I was quite surprised to be asked you know an, an opinion on something and it, it, it wasn't an opinion it was it was what your colleagues are often termed judge of fact and what we pointed out was something that factually happened it was a, basically it was an over, overtake uh, before the start finish line and uh, a lot of people don't realize that you know, even if you're a commentator or lap scoring in the country but you're signed on so you're actually a signed on official and you can can be called upon to you know for an opinion absolutely but, like, but i wouldn't and, want your job mate because it's it is so so dear. i wouldn't i wouldn't be experienced enough even though i've watched you know so many races I, i've not done it from the race driver's seat so i wouldn't wouldn't have enough knowledge to do that no and uh interestingly until i actually started racing myself i didn't realize how inexperienced as a clerk i was and the things that i was missing as a clerk so it, do, it does change your perspective and if anything it's actually made me a more robust um, Clark, in terms of the penalties that I give out, because I've seen it from the, uh, I suppose, from the competitors' side. Yeah, yeah. The uh, MSA book of excuses doesn't really cover everything until you get <laughs> racing. <laughs> Indeed, it doesn't. And uh, the one thing I would say about the whole judge of fact system, you can never appeal a judge of fact statement, um, which is a beautiful thing, really, uh, and it, it can help unpick an argument, particularly for drivers getting slightly emotional about uh, what's happening. Uh, it's, just, it's, just, it's often the parents that are the worst. <laughs> Indeed, and I've had a couple of those experiences myself, but I will uh, I will reserve uh, name calling on that one. Parting yeah, dads. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly. <laughs> uh, that's the one, motorsport dads. Oh, there's yeah. something going on in qualifying here. The sim boys seem to be top four. Uh, yeah, good, good spots, Martin. Yeah, Jack Mack, quickest again. Um, well, I say again because it was Dave Marshall who grabbed that pole position. Marshall was actually a little way down earlier on when when I checked in session at, at uh, early doors, he was down in fourth. Um, McIntyre from Ryan Elliott was second. Ryan now down in third place. So Marshall, you know, just to just to prove me wrong, saying that the the times would be set in the opening laps, it didn't happen here. We're seeing a massive settle down as this has gone on. But yeah. uh, McIntyre's been consistently at the top. But Dave Marshall moved up fourth to second, Ryan Elliott third. Tobin Lee, um, a late quick lap setter as well, is in fourth. And he was um, down in tenth place last time I wrote the scores down. And he's now up into fourth. Josh Martin fifth. He's having a good consistent meeting. Alex Toth-Jones, who was third earlier on in session, down in sixth from Max Coates. Then Callum Newsham up ahead of his teammate, Jordan Brennan. Rob Butler is rounding out the top ten ahead of Isaac Smith. So it's fascinating. We've got the... the top two championship protagonists there but um josh hislop again struggling around here which is unusual to see the third man in the championship not having a good day and this means points wise that uh, the two m's mcintyre and marshall are going to pull that little bit further clear of him and i reckon tobin lee fourth now is in with a good shout of moving back into third place in the championship there is the machine marshal, the Silverstone Composites 66 car. Still working down. He's only five hundredths down on Jack McIntyre. McIntyre knows that, that he's he's got that win. He's managed to beat Dave Marshall twice, but Marshall will know that it, it is all about not necessarily about winning races. He'll take the wins when he can, but he knows it's about finishing these races and maintaining that points gap that he's got. Now, unlike previous weekends, I haven't had the chance during our break to add up any points but i don't think there have been any significant changes in the top positions in the championship there's alex toff jones in sixth place at the at the moment he was our featured driver in race number one calamish race two race three jordan brennan we're featuring and uh, damien hall looking forward to having a chat with uh, bob and damien as well so two real world drivers featured in this round and two uh, sim races hope you enjoyed the chat with Alex as well. It was a good interview. Alex came over very well in the interview, I thought.
European economy following Alex Toth Jones into pit lane. So Max Coates goes through shot in 71. He is seventh head of Callum Newsham. Newsham and Brennan tied together on the timing screens again. Dave Marshall is P2. So let's jot these down so that we've got our grid. Uh, McIntyre, Marshall, Elliott, and Tobin Lee will line up on row two. Row three. Josh Martin and uh, Alex Toth Jones. Row four will be Max Coates and Callum Newsham. So Callum getting the better of Jordan Brennan with Rob Butler in between them this time. So Callum having a, a better run, maybe because he's got the focus on him in this race, or maybe not. That remains to be seen. Well, this this has a potential for a great race. So there's confirmation of the times of indeed our top 15. So following Jordan Brennan, we've got Isaac Smith in 1, 2, 3. Josh Hislop, third in the championship, down in 12. Damien Hall, 13th, ahead of Tom Williams and Max Bird in 15th place. Luke Kidsley, who won race two. Luke's got work to do to get back in, up into the reverse grid positions. Then Will Fairclough. James McIntyre in the uh, 47 is 18. Uh, next up is James Merrills in the 88 car, Ethan Hamilton 20th, Kim Economy from Craig Timmins, then Theo Bridgman, Simon Reid, Thomas O'Farrell and Ryan Dignan in 26th position as we head towards our third of four races this weekend here on the International Circuit at Silverstone. So the story is that we've got the two main championship stars, Jack McIntyre and Dave Marshall, P1 and 2 on the grid, ready for our 15th race of the season. It's been these two all weekend so far. It looks to me as if McIntyre has had the upper hand. Marshall got back with a little bit of a run in first qualifying, setting the first qualifying pole position time. So that was good for him. But McIntyre had his first fastest off the front race win in race number one of the day just getting ahead when it mattered of championship leader Dave Marshall. So he has made a little indentation into Marshall's championship lead over the two races. Those two had a cracker in race two as well, with McIntyre setting the pace, coming through the field from 10th on the grid. Dave Marshall following him, got in front around about the mid to late stages of the race, only for McIntyre to repay the favour once again. McIntyre finishing just off the podium, was challenging for a podium position but finished fourth in race number two. Marshall finishing in sixth position with Rob Butler, the uh, driver who was in between them. And Butler playing another sort of sandwich role in this one, being between the two teammates, Callum Newsham and Jordan Brennan. Rob qualifying in ninth position. So who's going to take this one? You'd be brave to, to bet against McIntyre and Marshall. But also we've got the likes of Ryan Elliott, who has had a very good qualifying here. Ryan, of course, has had a race win from the reverse grid scenario last time out. Another podium in our previous race with third position. But he's in with a shout here of building on that confidence, as we said earlier on in the day, and maybe getting involved for a first fastest off the front win from third on the grid. And Toby Lee next up. And as Martin Jones rightly pointed out, the Sim lads really setting the pace in this one with those top four positions. The top real-world drivers, Josh Martin and Alex Toth-Jones. Josh fifth on the grid and first in class, Alex Toth-Jones. Second in class, ahead of Max Coates, who is third in the real-world. Drivers seventh on the grid overall, Callum Newsham, another real-worlder, is in eighth as we count down towards the start of our third race. Let's have a, a quick word with uh, our from uh, qualifying and Jack McIntyre. It's the first time we've had polls shared at a venue. Well done. Yeah, thank you. I was a bit disappointed with Quali 1. I knew I had a lot more pace to unlock. I just couldn't put a lap down. So really pleased to have done that one. That was actually a personal best for me in Quali. So that's, that's up. That's a good benchmark to have. And uh, I think you were the... I was, I was saying at the start of the session that drivers tend to go out, bang the quick lap in. That's what we saw in session one. 
but some of the others, there was a lot of place trading uh, below you, but you, you did it as per the script, went out, banged it in fairly quickly. Yeah, just just managed to get one in pretty early. I think I maybe had a little bit of a toe as well, so that must have helped. Give me a few hundreds extra over Dave, um, who's quick as always. I was I was never really expecting to be able to back pole here. Dave has been so quick in practice, and I've not really been able to match his pace. So, yeah. Didn't speak to you after race two, but you were just one place shy of the podium, and uh, I was speculating that either you or Dave was going to you know nip up onto the podium. But frenetic race, wasn't it? Race race two. Yeah, that was a bit of a wild one at times. I think three wide down the hangar straight into Stowe was, was a little bit ambitious. Um, but no, really good race, really good defended from Ryan at the end, so he deserved that podium. Uh, any thoughts for this race? Just uh, you're going to try and obviously try and break the toe and, and get away, but it's not the easiest thing to do, is it here? No, yeah, we'll, we'll just see what happens. I mean, it's I always prefer to follow, so if Dave gets an opportunity to, to have a pass early on, I may just let him go and just try and see if we can both pull away from the pack. But we just got to see how it goes, see how the start goes, and then and work from there. Well, I wish you well. Good luck. And uh, hopefully we'll have a, a chat with you on the podium after race three. That was our pole position man, Jack McIntyre. The silent assassin going about his business, as ever he does in superb fashion here. I do think Dave Marshall for pole position. Featured driver in this race, though, is Jordan Brennan. Jordan, welcome into the uh, comms box. And 10th uh, position here. So maybe quality not quite as good for you as you, you might have hoped. Yeah, it went so good. Um, there was a lot of cars off on in front of me on a lot of my laps, so I lost quite a bit of time. But hopefully, I can push forwards in this race and see what I can get out of it. One of the things we've seen of, of you racing is that you're not afraid of, of making a pass and, and going for it. You're a capable sim racer and capable of mixing it with these guys. Is your first target though going to be your teammate Callum? Because you two always seem to be fighting it out or there or thereabouts together. Um, yeah, I'll see what I can do. I, I, just, I have the, hopefully I have the pace to beat him. Um, we'll see what happens. Well, good luck for the race. Uh, sorry to cut you short, but I want to grab a quick word with uh, our feature driver for race four, which is Damien Hall. Damien, welcome up to the, the commentary box, and uh, you're furthest away. First of all, what time is it there? Because you're in a completely different time zone to the rest of us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, it's 9.12 in the morning here now. So it's an early start for you, fella. <laughs> yeah, I'm up at six o'clock. Oh, wow. So talk us through uh, race one. I think you had a little bit of a coming together with Max Bird. Was that a bit of internet lag? Yeah, um, I apologize to Max. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I locked up. I had a lot of issues from the beginning of the race. I had a good qualifying, but at the start of the race, I had an issue with my sim where I couldn't see the start lights. So I had to go off the reaction of the other drivers. Right. That's quite difficult to cope with, isn't it? Yeah, very, very. But still fun. Race was still fun. Had a good time. That was good. It was nice to see you up in towards the uh, the top 10. Your best result, 10th position, Donington Park uh, so far. But you look very capable of replicating that. What are you hoping for in this one? Uh, basically, just to see all the trouble. Just to see all the trouble. Well, Damien, thanks, thanks for chatting to us. We look forward to, to catching up with you in race four a little bit later on have a good race all right thanks for having me it's our pleasure mate we'll, we'll hopefully do one of our driver interviews with damien as well as to try and sort the uh, time difference out so we do it at a civilized time in the morning and, and not too late uh, but that's something we'll, we'll try and get on and uh, meet our bob our barbadian policeman believe it or not so we can find out a little bit more about him over the coming weeks which would be uh, which would be which would be good to know yes uh, I think former Q. <laughs> <laughs> That's the trouble. Everything's virtual now, isn't it? You know, with with my uh, with my day job. So why don't I just do it on Zoom? You know, do I do I have to? Can I not go and do a bit of travelling? Mm. I think people are going to be very keen to get back to real travelling. Actually, I, I think it will only be when it's a necessity that people will enjoy it. I know. I uh, a couple of weeks ago had to go into my uh, regular office and actually felt guilty for having to do so, but encountered nobody on the way and nobody in the office so it was actually a, 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 an extremely safe safe thing to do thankfully but it was a nice experience just to, to, to get back into the old place that i used to hate so much yeah i i do miss my trips into london it's um you know a bit of business and uh, everything else so here we go yeah the uh, cars lined up just looking for the lights on the gantry ready for our third race lights are going on now A long wait, and Marshall and McIntyre will 
lead them away down into Abbey Corner for the first time. McIntyre makes a good start. That's why the outside is pole. A good sweep by him. Marshall is there in second position. Tobin Lee is fourth, busy chasing Ryan Elliott at the moment, but it's Marshall and McIntyre. And already Marshall's having a look up the inside line for the lead. Pops the nose of the 66 car on the inside line, but better momentum through the sweeps here at Silverstone for the race leader, but Marshall showing him means business. Still got the inside line. Drifts across, little bit of a run between the cars as they come out of chapel onto Hangar Straight. And this iconic shot, superbly reproduced graphically. It is back in tyre, still leading. Marshall slots into second in the slipstream. Toby Lee is third. Now, I think we've got Alex Toff Jones made up of position as well. Ethan Hamilton uh, looking to try and move up as well. But here's the side by side for the uh, two leaders. And it's Marshall on the outside line here. If he can. Hang on to this long enough and grab the inside as they come into the chicane here. But they're still side by side. No, Marshall's uh, gone through into the lead. Superbly well read from Dave Marshall. The championship leader grabs the lead. Jack McIntyre second now under pressure. Massive pressure from Tobin Lee in third place. What an opening lap, Martin. What a great start. Uh, we, 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 we knew something was going to be special in this race. And I think it's just going to get better from here on in. These guys are after it. Ryan Elliott back in fourth. Tobin Lee is Annex third place after that that one lap. And uh, we'll want to engage now with Jack McIntyre. What Jack won't want is to get embroiled in a scrap for second position. I was trying to tease out of the drivers in the previous rounds whether they were you know, able to, to, to talk to other drivers and say, you know, can we work with each other so that the drivers in front can't get away? There doesn't actually seem to be that sort of uh, team camaraderie or, or drafting partners building up at the moment. And I think some of them, as the season goes on, might well want to consider that, message each other and get them to work together rather than allow people to get away. There is Jordan Brennan right in the mix. Josh Martin is immediately uh, in front of him. So Martin's dropped back from fifth on the grid down into 10th place at the moment. So not the happiest of first laps for him. And coming under pressure, uh, Brennan, is from Josh Hislop, who looks to the outside, then tucks his nose up the inside, getting a good run here and trying to find the space to come through. Jordan didn't sound too happy with his qualifying, but Dyson here, of course, with a noted race winner. So certainly in extremely good company. At the moment, it's Jordan Brenner. We've got somebody halfway across the track. Max Bird as well has a little moment in the gravel. will recover, so Bird will drop out of the top 15. He's now down into 17th place. Callum Newsham has... Uh, disappeared down the order as well. I wonder if Callum maybe had a drive through perhaps. We watch Alex Toff Jones running in fourth place there, taking the run onto Hangar Straight, but it's Marshall from McIntyre and then Tobin Lee in third position from Alex Toff Jones. Rob Butler next up from Ryan Elliott now down to six. So Ryan with a, a little bit of work to do, having lost a few places. James Barrell's here side by side with Tom Williams. Williams on the inside line. Makes it up into 12th place. James Merrills, who gave us that uh, superb demonstration lap at the opening to our program today, enjoying his race. Down behind them is Ethan Hamilton in 14th. Kim Economy 15th from Thomas O'Farrell. Then Max Bird did actually hang on to 17th place, head of Callum Newsham. Max Coates down in 19th. Theo Bridgman rounding out the top 20 at the moment in the grey number 22 car. The gap first to second, half a second. Four tenths back from second to third. McIntyre to lead. Alex Toff Jones with a little bit of a gap developing back to fourth at the moment, but still the top real world driver and running in fourth place as we watch Isaac Smith in one, two, three, chasing Josh Hislop, who saw the gap on the inside line. No second invitation needed there to have a little nibble at Jordan Brennan, but Jordan's got a little bit left better momentum and holds on to that space. It's got interesting to... with these cars, momentum's so important. Yeah, they need need to, to to build up, don't they, and and just make the most of it. And what that means is, of course, you know, thinking out a move, two or three corners before, as as we were hearing from the E Series clerk, of course, Andy Ringland, saying that you have to look back two or three corners on most of the event, most of the protests that you might have, and that's because the build, the, the moves start to build up, don't they? Three or four corners in advance. They do. Absolutely, the uh, the red mist comes in. Josh Hislop up into the top 10. This is the, the Hislop that we've known and loved from the previous rounds. He's in that position where he could again 
grab a provisional pole for the reverse grid race. He'll want to come further up the order, certainly won't want to be passed by Isaac Smith, both of them synonymous with Fiesta racing. James McIntyre is uh, in behind them as well. And in fact, McIntyre just getting his nose in front of Isaac Smith on that corner. On board with the 37 car, Jack McIntyre, with two McIntyres in the race, and down Hanger Straight, and having a look at Dave Marshall. He's got the gap down now, under braking to under two tenths of a second. This is going to be a great race. Yeah, these two so these two. E yeah so evenly matched, aren't oh, oh, they, Martin? Really, you know, nip and tight at the moment. It's it's two nil in terms of who's the who in the races to the 37 car and he's the chaser and you heard him say in that interview in race number one he prefers to be the chaser but the hunter is also the hunted here because right behind him is Tobin Lee that purple and white car trying to close in on him as well so McIntyre could well find himself under a little bit of pressure before too long it's Alex Toff Jones in fourth Rob Butler fifth Ryan Elliott in sixth place and I haven't even had a chance to look at fastest laps yet Fastest lap, your boy Alex Toff Jones. Yeah, he's uh, he's got a, he's got the uh, the scent of something here. So too as Jack McIntyre has a look. He's playing the different lines. He's hurrying the race leader. Gets a sweep into this corner. That was about momentum. Got a good sweep into that uh, final corner on the lap, and he's now uh, sorry coming onto the hangar straight. He's now teeing himself up on the inside line. He's got his nose in front. That's showing on the timing screen. And it's got the inside line now as they come down into snow. So D Dave Marshall relegated to second. McIntyre using momentum there to go through. And now, of course, we've got the third place car, Tobin Lee, coming into the mix as well. Alex Toff Jones could well capitalise here if the top three jockey for position slow each other up. This is classic motor racing in this day and age. Exactly what you want to see the one mate championship. McIntyre out front, Marshall second, Lee third, Toff Jones. Class leader for the real world drivers is four. Still got the fastest lap as well. Rob Butler a little bit behind, but fascinating stuff. There is Max Bird in the 44s. Made up two positions from his earlier off and has got ahead of Callum Newsham. Max Coates in 17th. Disappointed meeting so far for Max Coates. McIntyre's exit of uh, Chapel uh, just teed it up beautifully for the uh, pass down uh, Hanger straight into Stowe. Uh, just nailed it. That's uh, very impressive from that man. It was a cracking move, wasn't it? And we, yeah, I think, I think you know, we were after the second round where Dave Marshall was moving away points wise. We kind of thought he was going to be doing, you know, romping away from everybody round after round, but it's just not been the case. This is a classic race. Sure, he's at the top, but so too is Jack McIntyre. As we look at Kenny Press in the number five, good to see Kenny. Haven't had a chance to talk too much about. Kenny comes from Draker in Derbyshire. Tim racing since 2008, so a long time uh, driver has won several Tim championships over the over the years. It goes by the nickname of the the two wheeler. I haven't seen too much of that from him today, but great to see Kenny Press. He's supposed to be our feature driver last time. For some reason, we didn't get to catch up with him, but um, driver that helps enormously with all the graphics of the cars. And you can see here in a great race with uh, Kim Economy, who is in 25th position. So. Kenny enjoying his race with uh, regular mini race oh, there, here. There was a two wheeler for you. <laughs> he did. Yeah. On right cue. On. Absolutely right. Here's Jack McIntyre looking back. Dave Marshall, what a superb graphic that is of Marshall piling the pressure on. McIntyre was half a second to the detriment of Marshall at the end of lap number one, but that was overturned. And as you can see, Marshall keeping things honest at the moment. It's developed a bit of a lead, half a second, over third place Tobin Lee at the minute. And then just four tenths back, you can see Alex Toff Jones at the back of this quartet. If you count the lead car as well of the quartet, is very nearly onto a podium position here. So not that far away. Rides the curbs, does uh, Alex, in his pursuit. And we're at the halfway stage of the race already. Ten minutes left. How quickly did that go? Oh, it's flying by. It does some good things. So Jordan Brennan, he's having a good run as well. Our featured driver in this one has, has made it up into eighth place. And Handley is going to have a, a decent position if he can maintain that in the Liquid Molly Norscott car. For If he can maintain that, he'll have a, a front row position or thereabouts for the partially reversed grid. And he's a driver that 
we have been saying round after round that we're expecting him to grab a podium before long. He's had a brace of fourth positions. He's had fifth places, six, seventh, and eight. But he, we know he has got the skill to get that car up into a podium position and hang on to it. It just hasn't had the brakes yet. And uh, maybe today for race four is what we'll see as Dave Marshall closes in again. Four hundredths of a second between the race leader and the championship leader who looks along the inside line. They're side by side. This is again classic sim racing here at Silverstone between the two M's, Marshall and McIntyre, the machine versus the assassin. And they are going at it. Hammer and Tom's and McIntyre's having none of it. Toby Lee coming into the mix as well. But he goes wide as McIntyre and through goes Marshall. Through is going to come Toby Lee as well who sees the gap and follows Dave Marshall through. McIntyre is back in third place. Alex Toff Jones trying to close in on them. It's a quartet for the lead. And the championship leader, Dave Marshall, trying to turn his fortunes around. Not that they were bad in race number one, but he was beaten by McIntyre twice. And he's got in front here and he'll be delighted, or maybe not so, to see Tobin Lee up with him because Tobin Lee is uh, a, as equal a threat in terms of the championship as the race as Jack McIntyre is. What great action. It's superb, isn't it? And here they come then again out of Chapel Corner onto the hangar straight. I'd say this is the point of the circuit where they get a breather, but they don't because they're all going to be looking around them to see what's going on, to see where the next challenge is. Lee has a, a little off-line look, maybe defensive, perhaps, from Jack McIntyre in third place. Quick look there. Uh, Jordan Brennan still running well. Fastest lap of the race still with Alex Todd Jones. If the pattern repeats itself in this race, then he will hang on to that because it, it does seem that the fastest laps set earlier in the race tend to stick right the way through the race. An extra six points for that. So Alex could well be moving further up the order. I think he probably now has moved up from ninth overall. Uh, probably. He's probably the second second place driver in the real world class now, my mass. I, I apologise if I've got that wrong, but I think he's moved up to second in class potentially at the moment with a, a sterling meeting so far left hand shot as you can see is James Martin ahead of Jordan Brennan Martin in green in seventh place and Jordan's going to have a, a look here to see whether he can close up and move a little bit further ahead the upside here if you can move ahead is more more points and you edge yourself closer to a podium the downside is that you, the further you go up the grid then the further back you start for the reverse grid race Ryan Elliott immediately in front of him the white and blue car of Rob Butler having a quiet fifth position at the moment behind the quartet of Marshall, Lee, Toth Jones and Jack McIntyre who's now back in fourth position. So Alex Toth Jones now up into third, still with that fastest lap and running well. We ride on board with Alex and you can see he was maybe best part of a second behind these guys a couple of laps ago, but the, the fighting has, has sorted them all out. Seven tenths first to second as they cross the line. Tobin Lee second, Alex Toth Jones in third, then Jack McIntyre, you can see in the mirror graphic, top centre of your screen, is uh, all over them as well. McIntyre certainly will not give up the fight. Brilliant race here, so regardless of overall podium or not, Alex Toth Jones top real world racer. Rob Butler second in class at the moment. And Josh Martin, I think, third in that group. Max Coates down in 14th. Was second in the championship for the real world drivers uh, class. Max Bird 15th behind him. Then Callum Newsham. Jordan Brennan still in seventh place as the race leaders go through. Uh, that's not the race leaders. It's Max Coates busy chasing Ethan Hamilton at the moment. So the two Yorkshiremen. And the other thing you might have noticed, Martin, if you've watched it the last few weeks, is that we do have a, a plethora of Yorkshiremen. I'm not sure what the collective noun is for the Yorkshiremen. I'm not saying. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit like Alex's nickname. You're not allowed to say, probably. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Got a nice different shot there from our race director as they came through that final turn to complete the lap. I'll tell you what, Dave Marshall is starting to do what he does best, and that is pull out a little bit of a lead. Two seconds over Tobin Lee. Three tenths down to Alex Toth Jones. The important thing here for Marshall Martin is that he's broken the toe now. Yeah, he's, um, he's looking good here. This is uh, quite interesting how it's uh, panned out between those four. Alex under pressure from Rob Butler, uh, sorry, from McIntyre and Rob Butler indeed, uh, immediately behind a little bit of uh, pixel trading again between the two cars. I think 
that was McIntyre getting back into position. Rob Butler coming up to join the party as well. So McIntyre back up to third. Alex Toff Jones is now in fourth place, coming under pressure from Rob Butler. I think we might be calling Rob Butler the silent assassin very soon because I'll tell you what, he's chipped away at the points at this meeting. Doing a super job. He's uh, Rob at the moment. Rob in the 74 car. Podium finisher for race two that we had uh, on the indie circuit at Brand Sack, so certainly no slouch. But good to see him up into fourth here and having a good run. It's Ryan Elliott in sixth place. Jordan Brennan still in seventh. Hold position at the moment for re the reverse grid race two will be with Isaac Smith and Josh Martin due to line up alongside him. Josh Hislop back in P2. So Hislop might be eyeing up another reverse grid race win here as we watch Jack McIntyre trying to close in on Tobin Lee. So are we seeing a little bit of a renaissance here from McIntyre in third place? Is he going to be able to close down on Lee? The gap seven tenths trying to close down. There is Butler now up ahead of Alex Toth Jones. Alex in fifth position so Butler takes over as the uh, leading real world driver in this one but it's not finished yet and Alex is coming off uh, line and having a look perfect. and dives through good move perfect end of hanger straight was that no yeah I think it, yes, was. it was yeah yep. super move then so Alex back into fourth position while they're squabbling though they're 1.4 seconds down on Jack back at the moment Jack half a second down on Tobin Lee, but the gap marshaled to Lee now, 2.3 seconds. So the championship leader stamping. Really, you've got to say, this is very definitely a response to what Jack McIntyre did to him in race number one. And at the minute, Marshall on for 50 points. It's going to take 10 points back from Jack McIntyre, who's down in, in P3. I say down, it's not that far. Still on the podium. I'd actually quite like to see Marshall, Lee and McIntyre all together so that we can see a three-way fight but Marshall doesn't want that that's a great shot isn't it there that's great yeah you could you could tell by Marshall's voice uh, in the interviews he wasn't happy after the first two races he didn't like that at all and he just seems to soak up the pressure so well. he doesn't I, I don't think he even feels the pressure but he, he knows what he's got to do and he just responds to it he, he's uh, yeah, quite a character and it's going to be fascinating once he gets into the I'm sure we're going to see him. He's, he's contested a couple of scholarships before to try and get him out on, on the racetrack. And uh, whether he wins this or not, I think we're going to see him out, out on, the, on, on the circuits in something before too long. And once he gets into the groove with it, he's going to be a fierce competitor. Oh, for sure. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I've got, I'm, all, uh, I'm all ears and eyes on him, to be honest with you. He's uh, very impressive. As in McIntyre as well. Yeah. Yeah, some really good people coming through this program. And, of course, that's the other delight. Apart from us getting to see the sim lads and the real-world racers going head-to-head, -head, we're actually you know, opening up the, the real-world market to these drivers and, and they're seeing what they can do. They're seeing how professional the mini challenge is in the various guises uh, that we had. And I didn't get the chance to, to, uh, to say it, of course, but Andrew Ringland running in the uh, pro category, you're going to see... Andy joining us on the token package at uh, a few rounds this year as well, um, uh, which oh, we really, really look that forward was, that to. That was a great chat with. Yeah, that was a great chat with Andy. That was uh, really in, enlightening. Yeah, and thanks to the production team and Andy for sorting that out, and uh, just you know talking to us about what he does. And we, I think we all knew that, that they do a lot of work, but that much work and commitment they put in, absolutely superb. We were having a quick look there. Isaac Smith, who at the moment is on provisional pole in 10th place, racing with Josh Martin. They're dicing over 9th and 10th place. Smith goes up to 9th now. Martin, Josh Martin in 10th, so he's provisional pole in green. Two cars going through shot. Being followed by James McIntyre. Tom Williams is next. Max Bird now 13th. Bird having a good recovery drive. And you know what I've clean forgotten to do over the course of the three races, and nobody's reminded me um, as to who driver of, of the race was going to be in each of the races. But uh, for me, in this one at the moment, I'm going to... Uh, say good recovery from from max bird we've got 25 uh, seconds plus one lap to go and i've been keeping my eye on, on max trying to work his way through um so we'll have to go back and try and uh, work out who we're going to do in races one and two i think race one probably would would be our winner uh jack mcintyre and race two i'll have to give a little bit of thought out i don't know if someone's writing that down i'll probably get asked for it at the end of the day 
and uh, have to let you know who that is. But uh, maybe Martin, you could remind me for race four who, who the, the race is going to be. But this is for ninth place. You can see Isaac Smith there in the dark blue car. They're fighting over the front row positions for race two, coming up towards us here. Isaac Smith, who could well add to the maiden podium he had last time out, had a third place in race three on the national circuit last time. So if he can start on the front row, might be able to get his head down and grab a mini challenge win. He's going to be racing in the JCWs this year, of course. We moved up from the BRSCC Fiesta Championship. I got taken to task, actually, by saying about drivers moving up from various formulae. And in some respects, it can be regarded as moving across. But uh, I mean absolutely no disrespect to the BRSCC Fiesta to say moving up. It is a, uh, a higher regarded championship on a, a bigger platform. So to, it is a move up from the, the BRSCC Fiestas. But that takes nothing away from what a superb championship that is. And... Uh, wonderful amount of real top class drivers have raced in that over the year over the years including likes of uh, ash sutton who was actually not a champion in fiestas but uh, cut his teeth racing wise in there but so uh, we're on the final lap and it's marshall from lee the gap now incredibly martin 4.9 seconds that's incredible he's uh he's really got for it uh or gone for it this uh, this race very impressive He's done well coming down towards the checkered flag to win a fastest off the front race again. He does it. Tobin Lee under pressure from Jack McIntyre, but it's Tobin Lee that takes second. Jack McIntyre completes the podium. It's a very familiar look to the podium. The first real world racer, having set the fastest lap early on in the race, lost the real world class lead to Rob Butler, but coming through the fourth position and class win, Alex Toff Jones is in fourth. Rob Butler takes fifth position, then Ryan Elliott, quiet sixth position for Ryan, Ryan but a, a good result nonetheless. Uh, and then in seventh place was Scott Brennan, one of our featured drivers. A, a, not a bad race for him, getting from tenth up into seventh place. Josh Hislop takes eighth position ahead of Isaac Smith, who is ninth and pole position for race four, will be josh martin so fascinating race once again yeah i'm very chuffed there for uh, for alex because for some reason the sim race has uh, looked very strong in race three <laughs> yeah good class victory there is uh max coates who was 13th in that one so podium having a a very familiar look to it for sure but it's going to mean that the opening to our next race is going to be uh, interesting. Nice and Smith and Josh Martin starting off pole position. Down into our virtual pit lane come uh, some podium regulars, you have to say. But what a, a superb uh, race that was. Just having a quick look. Dave Marshall is uh, down with us already. Dave, this is... Uh, but you know the routine now, don't you? Coming into Park Verme and you very quickly join us. But congratulations, super race. You had to work hard to get into the lead. And the work wasn't done for you because you built up a, a fantastic winning margin at the end. Well done. Yeah, I think it's the way the season's going to go, isn't it? The, the, the top drivers are all such on e even pace. Um, who knows who's going to win which race and which qualify. Um, yeah, that was a bit of an unexpected start, actually. Um, I was putting the pressure on Jack from the start because there was a few good opportunities. Uh, but Tobin found some serious pace in that race and... Uh, he was going to have us if I didn't get past Jack Quick, so I braved it round the outside in the in the in the last chicane and um, managed to get the move done round the outside. So luckily got the breakaway and then uh, good to see my teammate come through into second. My co-commentator Martin Jones was saying that he, he heard it in your voice that you were determined to uh, do something about finishing behind Jack Mack in the in the first two races today. Is that the case? Uh, it, it, at the end of the day, for me, I just want to do as well as I can every single race I do. So, if there's a position in front of us, I want to get it. So, and uh, P10 for the next race. We'll we'll uh, see whether you can work your way through and uh, maybe get a podium. Don't want to put the pressure on you, but you know it's it's great to see you making the moves through. We'll give you a couple of minutes to recover. Well done on another superb win. Cheers. Thanks for that. Let's move down to uh, our second place driver. What a cracking drive. He managed to, to beat the man who was scoring the big points 
after races one and two today. Tobin Lee on the podium again. Congratulations. What a hard race. Yeah, thanks. I mean, it was, a re it was another tough race. We've come from a reverse grid where it was tough and now, you know, even tougher this time with a really fierce battle. I think it was quite... I, I For once, I got in quite a good quality time starting P4 and then once I got past Ryan with an aggressive start, uh, I knew that I had race pace and, and I think I wanted to let the top two battle as much as they could because naturally that would slow them down and, and, and luckily uh, they were scrapping nicely for the first like 10 minutes and then I had a little opportunity to get by Jack and I basically made, made my car as wide as I possibly could because his pace is absolutely phenomenal as, uh, as always again this weekend. But yeah, I was really happy uh, with P2. When, you, when you're defending, does that really sort of compromise your chase of the race leader yeah yeah definitely i mean dave once he was out in the lead he was pretty i mean he was let loose wasn't he his, his leash was taken off and he was able to get away very quickly indeed but um yeah i, I mean it's just the, the pressure when fighting at the front of this field is, is actually like this field is really competitive <laughs> like in all the esport things I've done, this is actually like well up there in the difficulty. So fair play, everyone. It's got to be with the prize fund on offer, fella. Exactly. It's it's uh, really cool. Well, well done. It's a cracking, entertaining race, and well done for fending off Jack McIntyre who's there. We'll see you for race four, Tobin. And let's go to the driver who completes our podium here for race three. Uh, it is another podium, and maintaining an incredible consistency with speed and dogged determination jack mcintyre how disappointed are you with third jack uh reasonably i can't lie i mean third place is still brilliant and some really good points there so i'm, I'm happy to get those on the board but i i really could have done so much more from that um fair play at tobin and everyone else there was a lot of a lot of tough racing during that um but i i just made a few small little tactical mistakes that dropped me down a few positions and really compromised my uh, my opportunities but yeah still still a good finish you never give up, though. You're, you're a proper driver. We always see you getting stuck in, and it was right the way to the checkered flag, chasing Tobin Lee just to try and get that P2 back. Yeah, I mean, like, like Tobin said, I've done a lot of um, a lot of competitions and a lot of leagues and a lot of long championships before, and it, it really does come down to every point at the end. So, yeah, never give, never give up, never surrender. Always try and do his best. Well, well done. Super, super third place. Thanks for uh, chatting to us. And uh, we'll see you for the reverse grid race four, which will take place in a few minutes. Yeah, thank you. Uh, podium then. Dave Marshall, the championship leader, scoring some good points there once again. Fourth position and a reminder, the fastest lap points for fourth place going to Alex Toth Jones. So Alex actually picks up 37 plus 6, 43 points. So effectively, that was a third place finish points wise in that race for grabbing the fastest lap the way that it works out. So he won't be unhappy with that. And, and again, my maths subject to confirmation, I reckon he may well have moved into second position in the real world class. Now, talking of championship points, it, it is complicated. There are judicials, obviously, that and now you definitely know about the judicials, having had that chat with Andrew England earlier on. There are judicials which have gone through, so we won't be publishing the championship points at the end of the broadcast, but it does give us something to look forward to on social media over the next couple of days. So uh, championship uh, positions will be uh, determined there. The one time we're going to have to look out for it is Brands Hatch GP, so uh, I'm sure we'll have something in place. Um, might Maybe seconding some mathematicians from somewhere uh, to, to be able to, to, to work out what's happening when we get to Brands Hatch GP at the end of the season. What a great circuit that is, talking of which. Yeah, really looking forward to that. Yeah. It's just just a shame that they uh, they built the housing estate and then the people in the housing oh. estate tried to sh tried to close the circuit down. Uh, you just go, oh, really? It's a classic, pl classic place. Yeah, uh, I agree. But once all the cars are electric in a few years time, they won't have anything to complain about, so. Oh no, don't. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hybrids, I can put up with them. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I think they're going to have to have a big rethink about uh, what they're doing with electric. It's, uh, to me, and uh, this is my personal opinion and not that of uh, MSL of course. Uh, consultants, is that uh, I don't think we've got the infrastructure. They've not thought about it. And I'll shut up for now because here we go, race four.
good spot, Martin, and uh, cars on the grid. So Josh Martin on pole, Isaac Smith is alongside row two, Josh Hislop with Scott Brennan, then Ryan Elliott and Rob Butler, Alex Toth Jones on row four with Jack McIntyre, the last drive we just heard from on the podium, and then Tobin Lee and Dave Marshall completing the top 10. Splendid sight, absolutely superb shot with Josh Martin there. Red light starting to go on for our final race of the day. Longish wait again, and away we go. Isaac Smith, the chaser in P2, looks up the inside line. Josh Hislop in the light blue NHS livery car in third. And everybody away well. We hold our breath to see if they all make it through Abbey safe and sound the first time. And coming towards us now, it is Isaac Smith out front. And I tell you what, there is contact in the field. And I think, sadly, that was Alex Toff Jones who got tagged and will fall back down the order. But it's Isaac Smith coming under pressure here from Josh Hislop. Smith and Hislop, Josh Martin, the pole position man down to third, but won't give up without a fight. Running well is Brian Elliott. Now, Ryan finished well, didn't he, in the previous race and has made good ground already in the first few corners of this one to go up into fourth position. Martin having a go at his lot, but it's Isaac Smith, the race leader, going down into Stowe Corner. Frenetic first few corners. Alex Toth Jones, we did see him pinging off. He's 16th at the moment, Alex, so we've work to do. We'll keep an eye on what sort of recovery he can do, but it's Isaac Smith who leads. Martin running a little bit deep into the corner there in third place but it's the fiesta champion in the one two three car who is out front josh hislop is in p2 as they complete at the first lap of our fourth race of the day down towards abbey corner again hislop smith elliot now jack mcintyre is on a complete mission here he's up into fourth place from eighth position on the grid and won't be content with looking for a podium from there. He'll be looking for the win for sure. In fact, now, or is he? Because the timing screen sorting itself out as Martin goes oh, through well. on the inside line, that's, grabs the curve, and... That's, that was Ma very cheeky. Ma yeah, Max Coates has come into the top ten as well. So Coates has had uh, a red mist start, or enthusiastic start as well, as Smith and Hislop start to break, break free. Ryan Elliott is next up. And then uh, Dave Marshall and Jack McIntyre... Uh, are together once again. So the two leaders who battled in the early stages of race three, side by side. McIntyre's got his nose in front at the moment. The white blue car on the outside line. 66 on the outside there with Max Coates in behind as well. Nice to see James McIntyre in the 47 car there as Coates goes up on the inside line here. Marshall's oh, up ahead of McIntyre and Coates looking to go through with Josh Martin in the mix as well. Superb stuff, Martin. What a what a great move if that sticks. Oh, it has. Yeah, good stuff for Max Coates. He definitely wants a podium here. He's only one place shy of the podium at the moment. But uh, Jack McIntyre off track there as well. McIntyre forced off line. So that's going to dip him a couple of places behind Ooh. Dave Marshall. It's going to get messy. Yeah, getting messy and physical. So Coates, he's actually 2.7 seconds down on Ryan Elliott now. So while they're squabbling, you can, you can see the gap. Here come the lead trio. Isaac Smith, Josh Hislop, then Ryan Elliott in third place. Ryan already with the podium today. I, I know he would dearly love to go away with a double podium, as he did last time out on the national circuit. Silverstone, I think it's going to be a good track for him. And there's our featured driver, Damien Hall. Great to have a chat with him. Damien dicing with the 47 car, James McIntyre, with Alex Toth Jones immediately in front of them. Yeah, Alex is making his way through the field here really quickly. Yeah, he's nearly back in the top 10, isn't he? So it's uh, 11th place at the moment. Mm. And it, I'll tell you what, he, he wouldn't say no to another reverse grid race after this because he'd be uh, up at the sharp <laughs> end of it. But uh, sadly, yeah. we can't do that, unfortunately. Oh, and a massive hit there! Oh. Into the pit wall Big in the off. background. And uh, possibly into retirement, but uh, it's Marshall back in front of Max Coates for fourth position. Dave Marshall, this is one of the... Uh, biggest climbs we've seen from Marshall through the field. Uh, he is, let me see, fourth place at the moment. But that's his best reverse position. That was Franz Hatch, I think, which was our second one, race two. He had a fifth position last time out here, but this is real good stuff from Marshall. 
He's got nothing to prove other than just to keep finishing and, and grab the points. And his arch championship rival at the moment is uh, down in 10th place. So McIntyre, yeah. well out he of this one. He definitely did like the first two races. Different different uh, attitude in the, the second two. He's really, uh, really getting his elbows out. There is Jack McIntyre, second in the championship, tenth position, chasing Callum Newsham. So Callum having a, a decent run up ahead of them. Max Bird, who tentatively I nominated as as driver of the race for race three. I still need to go back over my notes for race two, but Jack McIntyre with some work to do. Alex Toth Jones trying to reel him in. That'll be the next guy you see to shot behind that trio that we're looking at. Damien Hall dicing with Theo Bridgman Williams, and. Uh, having a good run Theo putting him under a bit of pressure and again you can see here although this is positions 13 14 to 15 four very close cars indeed all having a good race and you know we're a quarter of the way into this race and they're still dicing right the way down the order which is good to see okay, Marshall with fastest lap as well so Marshall potentially on for another six points here he's got the gap down to Ryan Elliott now to under two seconds it was 2.01 last time we saw the time check and it's now 1.9 Elliot 1.8 seconds down on Josh Hislop at the minute there is Josh Martin in sixth place Jordan Brennan busy chasing him Max Bird in eighth trying to get involved in the mix as well Coates under pressure from Josh Martin here at the moment so Brennan trying to reel them in at the moment we've got Ryan Elliot in clear air running in third place Dave Marshall will try and close in for Marshall, of course, this is no pressure really points wise because McIntyre in well now in ninth place up ahead of Callum Newsham and Tobin Lee, who's on the podium in race number three, finds himself down in twelfth place. So Tobin, who who was saying that he, he I think was getting decent results in the reverse grid races, not doing so here, but he's got Damien Hall right behind him in thirteenth place. Here's the leader though, Isaac Smith. In the 123 car, the 18 year old from Harrogate, so another Yorkshireman, running well, did absolutely superbly in the Fiesta Championship last year. It wasn't the easiest of championships for, for him to win. A lot of very good drivers, both uh, young and more mature racing in the Fiestas. You get a lot of sort of career drivers in, in that championship and staying with it. And a lot of very good teams that have stayed with that championship over the years as well but uh, he was the youngest driver to, to win that championship and now as, as we said moving up into the JCWs for this year and keeping a, a good gap here over Josh Islop at the moment second Josh tried to hunt him down but not having the best of fortunes in the 58 car at getting that gap down Islop with two wins under his belt race two wins in uh, Brands Hatch round and also here on the Silverstone National Circuit last time out. He's going to get good points here again. Ryan Smith, sorry, Ryan Elliott still in third position from Dave Marshall in fourth. Elliott to Marshall now 1.4 seconds, so he's slowly chipping away. Here comes Elliott down into Cobb's corner. Here comes Dave Marshall. Then it's Max Coates in fifth place, followed by Josh Martin. Quick flick back to Jack Mack who is in ninth position and then Callum Newsham but a, a good buffer going on now between Josh Martin and Jordan Brennan Brennan in sixth place again getting a little bit physical the liquid molly car trying to work his way around the outside line but it was a good exit of the corner for Josh Martin who maintains that position so Martin Brennan Bird and McIntyre with Callum Newsham in tenth it's really good to see Max Bird having a good run in this race. Yeah, we know he's capable of, of delivering good results and sorry to bang on about it for, for his family, but he just has not had um, the the fortune that you sometimes need in these races. He's being chased at the moment by Jack McIntyre, second in the championship, trying to hunt him down nearly at the halfway stage of this race. You can see McIntyre chasing Bird, Bird busy chasing uh, Jordan Brennan, who's got Josh Martin in front of him. Max Coates still running in fifth place. Quick check on the timing screen for fastest lap. Still with Dave Marshall 
He's got the gap now between himself and Ryan Elliott down to under a second. And in fact, brought two tenths back there as Dave Marshall. So the battle for third position, not quite a battle actually yet, but it is closing up between those two. This forecast crack equally worth our attention with Jack McIntyre trying to get back on terms with this group. Callum Newsham in behind him at the moment as well. Isaac Smith still the leader, on board with Josh Martin, trying to go down the inside line of Jordan Brennan. Jordan's got a good run though. Come down into Abbey oh. the right. <laughs> Just how close does it get? And uh, yeah, that's the end result. Yep. Josh having to take evasive action, rejoins down behind Jack Mack. So Jack McIntyre now up into eighth place. Alex Toth Jones is in 12th. Tobin Lee is next time. There is Tobin, who was on the podium last time out. Alex and Tobin will, I, I guess, be keen not to engage too much with each other, just to maybe try and work and close in on the rest of the pack. But uh, Yeah, they're, they're, certainly, they're certainly closing up now. So, yeah, nine nine minutes in a lap. Yeah, could, uh, could see some movement here. Yeah, these drivers have got time to improve. And this is now a battle. Dave Marshall challenging Ryan Elliott for third place. Marshall has closed up. Remember, the gap was 1.9 seconds a few laps ago. He's chipped away. He's caught Ryan Elliott. And now we're looking at Dave Marshall perhaps setting a little bit of personal history here in the Mini he, Challenge UK Series because he hasn't had a reverse grid podium yet. He's had a great drive. He's had a good day, hasn't he? He was uh, pole position earlier on, got beaten in races one and two by his championship rival. But as you said, Martin, he's just mindset bounce back and he's going to produce his best reverse grid result here without a doubt if he could get onto the podium that will be super news for him from 10th position on the grid i'd say end of hanger straight he'll uh, he'll make his move he's going to have a look are we watching a potential driver of the day here we know ryan elliott though is exceedingly good under pressure and Takes a defensive line there, maintaining the position. It's not going to be easy for, for Dave Marshall to pass him. And this is one of the big strengths of Ryan Elliott, the 18-year-old from Stockton on tees. But a little bit of side-by-side -side action again. Elliott holds on to it. Really does soak up the pressure here. And he knows that he's got the championship leader right with him. That was close. It was fair. This is nail-biting stuff. And keep your eyes open for Max Coates in fifth position who's trying to reel them in as well. Max Coates will take advantage of the fact that these two are squabbling and try and close in. And Ryan Elliott, as I say, he will not let Marshall pass if he can help it. Marshall putting him under pressure. And here's the view, the rear end of the Fanatec car. Marshall tees him up, makes the move down the inside. I'll tell you what, we, the director did a superb oh, job of doing up that move. But he's coming back, isn't he, on the cutback. A little bit of a kiss of the cuddle between the two cars. Marshall's got his nose in front, Ryan Elliott. He's teeing up the inside line again. Is he going to get the run? And as predicted, Max Coates is up in the mix as well. Elliot's got the inside run. There's a come along, hang a straight. Martin Jones, superb racing. Absolutely brilliant. Great, great discipline between them all. Marshall trying to get the run around the outside line here. As though he's not having it, Ryan Elliot. Rightly so. Elliot grabs the inside line. And Max Coates goes down the inside line. Sees a gap. He's going for third place. Coates is challenging for third as they come. Uh, down the gradient, in towards the chicane. Coates is on the outside line. He could end up surrendering a place here. Is he going to brave it out? Switches in, turns in tight. Dave Marshall's coming through as well. At the moment, we can't quite see where Ryan Elliott is. Elliott's going to lose the place. He's being bumped out on the outside line. Elliott muscled out of the way. Dave Marshall's going to grab the inside line as they come down into Abbey, but it was Max Coates who came through into P3. Across our curb cam they go. It's still Isaac Smith out front from Josh Hislop. Our apologies to them. Leading the race well. Max Coates is third. Dave Marshall still in fourth place. Ryan Elliott. Good defensive stuff, I thought, from, from Ryan Martin. Very clean. Very, very. He's worked that one out. That was very good. Yeah, he's, he's a great little racer, Ryan Elliott. We've got so many good races in this championship. And here's a view of our, our top three. Well, we flick back. Alex Toth Jones still making progress. He's in 12th. Working hard with Tobin Lee to try and close in on the lead group. Max Bird in the 44 car in seventh place. Jack Mack is ahead of him now up in sixth. So McIntyre's had a good recovery. Now here is our race leader, Isaac Smith. Pretty, pretty lonely race for him so far. 
and uh, just the one podium so far in the championship we had a, a preview race which i've discussed before on our championship coverage uh, in the week before our first event at donington park and isaac smith was was leading that one and since then we hadn't really seen the best of form from him but this is really going to help his confidence if he can take the reverse grid race win max coates doing superbly as well coates remember in this race didn't start in the top 10 so didn't benefit from the reverse grid uh, start but he's now caught Dave Marshall, the, the spectre of Dave Marshall looming large in his mirrors here. So Dave Marshall from Seaham in County Durham. That neck of the wood seems to produce quick races in this championship. The first two coming through shot. Isaac Smith, Josh Hislop in P2. He's not doing a good result here. It's going to keep his position as top real world racer pretty much intact. And Max Coates coming under pressure from Marshall. Tees up the inside line here. Good pass from Marshall. Max Coates is going to try and hang it out, though, on the outside line. Doesn't work. Marshall, I think, now goes for up into third place. Max getting a slightly better run out of the corner. We'll try and challenge him down. Meanwhile, we've got Jack McIntyre challenging Ryan Elliott behind this group as well. Here we go. There's Ryan. Jack McIntyre wants, of course, to get on the Coates and Marshall battle if he can. Still got four minutes to do so as they tick off another lap. The gap between... Uh, first and second still there. Max Coates not being left here by Dave Marshall. Almost like they're working together. Smith, Hislop, Marshall, Coates, Elliot, McIntyre, Bird, Martin, Brennan and Lee, the top 10. Alex Toff jones is 11th ahead of Callum Newsham. And once again, a superb race that we have had here at Silverstone as we watch Jack McIntyre now up ahead of Ryan Elliott, up into fifth position. Will he be able to close down on Max Coates before the end of the race? See whether he can do that. Featured driver here, Damien Hall, in 13th place at the moment, so not having a bad run, ahead of Ethan Hamilton and chasing Callum Newsham at the moment, as uh, Coates and Marshall. Still not that much between them, three tenths as they go through the checkpoint there. Smith 1.8 seconds clear of Josh Hislop to the good for the race lead at the moment. Dave Marshall is in third on for his best reverse grid race. And look at this three-way fight coming out of the uh, club corner and onto the, onto the main straight here. Josh Martin in the mix there with Jordan Brennan. Tobin Lee there as well. That is for eighth, ninth and 10th position and Martin holding sway at the moment Jordan exploring the wider line Tobin Lee looking up the inside line Alex Toth Jones trying to get in the mix as well Callum Newsham and Damien Hall in close proximity as well switch focus to Newsham there is Hall at the back of this group having a good race here the uh, Barbadian at the moment in 13th so uh, one of his better results is uh, Best finish so far, 10th position race three, I think, as we mentioned earlier on in the program. That was at Donington Park, but real good gaggle of cars enjoying a super scrap. This lead out to two seconds now. Dave Marshall is four seconds adrift. Max Coates losing a little bit of ground as well. And here comes Damien Hall. Looks down the inside line of Alex Toth Jones, who himself is teeing up. Callum Newsham has a look to the inside line. Hall switches lines here. He's going to go for the cutback on the exit of this corner. Not able to do that, carrying the momentum out to the out of reaches of the track challenging to for 12th position and across the line they go again one minute 43 plus one lap to go josh martin under big pressure in eighth place at the moment trying to close in max bird incident he's got three seconds over that group max in a, a lonely seventh place but having a good run again as alex comes under pressure from damien hall again in the 246 car uh, damien having a a decent race here as we look back to Tobin Lee at the head of this group in ninth place. Tobin trying to close in on Josh Martin. He's, he's broken a little bit clear at the moment. You can see Max Bird not that far behind Ryan Elliott now as well. So Bird closing in on Elliott. That would be for sixth position. Jack McIntyre ahead of them. Some play swapping about to go on here as well. Callum Newsham looking up the inside line of Alex Toth Jones and closing off on his teammate Jordan Brennan, who is running at the moment in what was 10th place, now 11th position. Alex Toth Jones now with his nose in front in 10th place. If you can consolidate this, but contact between them and off they go and into the pair of the two teammates. 
are off. That's definitely going to be one for Andy Ringland to look at, but a bit of disappointment for... No, it wasn't two teammates. It was Alex Toff-Jones uh, and Callum Newsham because Jordan Brennan... Oh, Jordan Brennan's actually gone into the pits according to the uh, uh, timing. Saw it was red and white cars in the distance that had gone as we watched the 58 car. Josh Hislop running in second place, so Isaac Smith still the leader. 2.4 seconds clear of Josh Hislop. We're looking at Jack McIntyre. Jack Mack is in fifth place trying to close down on Max Coates. And Damien Hall in his feature race is actually mirroring his best result here. Martin, with 10th place at the moment. Yes, it's good. And uh, if you're not going to win and uh, you're in a position where uh, you're knocked off, it's quite good TV coverage. So thanks, Alex. <laughs> If you may so many drivers I, I say that to, you know, if, you, if you're spinning, you're getting coverage. But uh, uh, you, can, you can make characters out of it. Just don't do it too much. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's a shame yeah, for Alex. He, he a good one. There he is. Yeah, he won't like it, much. That's, uh... No, understandably so. But he's, he's now dicing with Luke Kidsley, who, uh, of course, won race two yeah. of the day. Yeah, race winner. Yeah, so, you know... A lot of talent all the way down the field. And Luke 12th in this one, and Alex still 13th. So it's reasonable points to be had. 13th place accumulates 22 points. It's not what Alex wanted, but uh, it's going to put a dent in his progress up the ladder of the real world drivers' uh, points challenge. We're on to the final lap now, and it's Isaac Smith still there. Max Coates coming under pressure from Jack McIntyre. This for fourth position. McIntyre's done a good recovery here. You can see Marshall's moved clear. It's still Smith. From his lot, 2.8 seconds the gap now. Isaac Smith, another first time winner in the offing here at Silverstone as Jack McIntyre wants the extra points, challenges Max Coates, exploring the outside line. Coates hangs on to it, and McIntyre will have to work out a different strategy as they come down through Vale in towards the club complex once again. I don't think he's going to do it. It's going to be Isaac Smith who's going to make the win as they come up towards the final corner. Isaac Smith takes the win, his first win in the official Mini Challenge E-Series with Virtual Reality Racing Club. Second position to Josh Hislop. Third position goes to Dave Marshall, a podium from 10th position in the reverse grid race. And Max Coates holds on to take fourth position after a spirited challenge from Jack McIntyre. That's Another great. Delighted. Del Delighted for the top four. Five yeah, another, another good so, race, Martin, wasn't it? Yeah, it was another great race. What a good afternoon, gentlemen. It was. Our thanks to all of our drivers for entertaining us royally once again here as James Merrills uh, comes through as well. Josh Hislock, good to see him back on the podium. Dave Marshall in third place, championship leading tank. Did he maintain the fastest lap, Dave Marshall? Yes, he did. So, very good points. Uh, for him, Max Coates taking that fourth place from Jack McIntyre. And uh, there in the 97 car, Thomas O'Farrell comes from Isla. I haven't spoken too much about Thomas O'Farrell today from Port Ellen on Isla. And uh, used to do a bit of marshalling, so they're another group that in the real world, we very definitely can't do without the marshals. We've spoken a lot about race officials today, but uh, good to see that uh, Thomas made the move from marshalling into e-racing and hopefully into real world racing at some point as well in the very near future. So let's head down towards our virtual park, Fermi, for the fourth and final time today here on the International Circuit at Silverstone, where I think our top three drivers are assembling with uh, not the first time on the podium this year, but certainly the first time on the top step of the podium. Massive congratulations. Isaac Smith, well done, Isaac. Thank you very much. It was a very difficult race, I've got to admit. You made it look easier than that because you had a, a, a good gap at the end, but I'm guessing that, that Josh, who of course had already won some races in the series, was, was keeping you honest. What sort of problems did you encounter? Well, I put a little bit too much fuel in, which made it a bit more interesting at the start, I'll say. <laughs> okay. And obviously, whenever there was any mistakes, I picked on them against Josh and just kept 
my head down. And yeah, we've come through for a big. I was trying to work out whether you raced Josh in Fiestas or whether your Fiesta tenure was after his. Just after. It was just after. Yeah, I, was, I was trying to, when you're trying to sort of uh, assimilate all the information about drivers, ver you know, racing in championships over various years, it's difficult to do that. But uh, great to see another first time winner. We've had two first time winners today. Uh, and that must mean a great deal to you. Yeah, it does, obviously. It, in real life, obviously, it gives me a massive boost of. Yeah, <laughs> I can't really speak. It was a really good race to me. When are you going out testing in the JCWs for real, or have you done so already? I've been out in the Mini already, but very soon, hopefully. Okay, we look forward to, to seeing you out there on the uh, on the Toka package a little bit later on in the year. Well done. First time winner, Isaac Smith. Many congratulations, mate. Thank you very much. It's our pleasure. And also our pleasure to welcome the second place driver to the podium. Welcome back to the podium, Josh Hislop. Thanks, Richard. Good race for you. It was, it was hard work, for sure, by the look of it. Yeah, it was quite difficult. Um, I think my tyres got a little bit too hot sitting behind Isaac uh, in the first part of the race. And then from there, I struggled to keep up. But yeah, credit where credit's due. Isaac did an amazing job. He was really quick today. I think in terms of the, the real world drivers, obviously, you're still leading that championship, I think, by my maths, and that must mean a, a fair amount to you. Uh, I, hopefully not being unkind to say that maybe today not, not quite as, as consistent as you've had in the previous rounds. Yeah, today's been a bit of a difficult day. I uh, didn't qualify very well um, in the first qualifying session, and then from there just got caught up in a few incidents and ended up further back than I would have hoped. But... I'm glad to finish the weekend off with a good result for sure. And certainly not too much damage done in terms of your class leading the championship. Uh, it's good still to be leading the class championship even after a bit of a bad weekend. Um, so yeah, I'm happy with that. Nice one, Josh. Ta thanks for taking the time to talk to us and well done the second position of maintaining the class lead. And, thank uh, we you. Go thank you, mate. And we're going to go to our third place drive, making a habit of being on the podium. And a personal best of the year in terms of the reverse grid races from 10th position up onto the podium. Great drive once again to David Machine Marshall. Well done, Dave. Get in there. Get in there. <laughs> um, That's the but, first real passion I've heard from you. Uh, for the past four years, I've been trying to get into real cars. Uh, yeah. And it's always come down to budget and who's had the bigger back pocket. Yeah. Um, so this is the real opportunity for me to try and try and get a kickstart. Um, so I am giving it absolutely everything. So... Left it at the last race to finally find my pace during the race. And, uh, yeah, it got very messy at the start. There was cars crisscrossing in front of us, and somehow me and Max behind just managed to get straight through. Um, yeah, fantastic job to Isaac. Like, he's progressed so far this week. Uh, through practice, his pace has been phenomenal. And chuffed to see Max Coates um, come away with fourth. Shame I took the podium from him, but um, fantastic drive by him. Nice, nice comments from you there as well, David. Obviously, championship lead is intact, and and we'd love to see a little bit more of that passion as well. Because you know, I think the the job that you've done in the championship so far absolutely superb. But you know, to come through and, and grab a podium from tenth on the grid, absolutely, absolutely brilliant. And uh, you know, Jack was trying, Jack Mack was trying to close up on you in the, the closing stages as well. I think he was the first one to to break of the lead group for the previous race to break up towards the front. And I'd sort of called him there, and all of a sudden, hang, hang about, Dave Marshall's up there as well. So it was a blinding opening set of laps from you. Yeah, J Jack's got phenomenal pace. Um, there's no hiding that. You can see it on the leaderboard. Um, but sometimes luck works your way, and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, and that race was quite a messy start to try and get through the pack, and I just think I managed to get through it a bit cleaner than what he did and managed to get the break. And thanks to Max, we worked, worked together and get the tour to get the bit of the gap between the back pack and uh in the front guys but there was no catching josh and isaac they were they were gone and fair play to them yeah they, they did well earlier on you were saying in, in one of our interviews with you that you you prefer a more technical track and we don't get much more technical than where we're going next to uh, next time which is at snetterton have you done much practice there yes yeah, so snetterton's a fair difficult track um the, the only worry about snetterton is there's so many opportunities for for big contacts and risky moves um so it's just going to be a case of for me snetting its damage limitation let's just try and get a clean weekend and 
and just try and maintain this championship lead that I've got so far. Well, many congratulations. A fine third place. Uh, good race win today as well. And uh, Dave, we look forward to catching up with you next week. Cheers, Richard. Thanks. So, Sorry, Martin, Martin James, thanks ever so much for your company today. And uh, what are your initial thoughts about uh, watching it from the comms box? I loved it. Well, <laughs> good afternoon. It's, um, yeah, seeing uh, seeing some great racing, some some lads there with some serious talent. That uh, let's hope that we can get them on to uh, the real world and uh, see what they can do. Um, and also the real world, real world races. Uh, yeah, it's it's tough coming from from uh, that discipline into a sim sort of situation. So, yeah, all in all, thank you very much. What a great afternoon. It's been a pleasure to work with you. Any closing thoughts on uh, MSL's plans for the future? Obviously, you've got a few trade secrets up your sleeve, I guess, with the current scenario. But uh, what sort of things are you looking forward to over the rest of this year? Uh, we've got so much on. It's uh, it's unbelievable. And what is really exciting is the, the last three weeks uh, coming out of, uh, hopefully coming out of this uh, situation we're all in dreadful situation the phone's ringing there's a lot of buzz again formula one's getting going we're involved in that uh formula e uh touring cars british gt um toka i'm i'm just really looking forward to getting going so that uh, a lot of my friends can get back to work and uh, um relax a bit so that uh, we're all we're all going to be uh, on the other side of this shortly hopefully thanks guys yeah, thanks very much, Martin, for, for your company today and your, your input, which has been uh, greatly appreciated. And hopefully we'll be able to do it again soon. So from uh, all of us in the Official Mini Challenge E-Series with Virtual Reality Racing Club, a big thank you to Andy Ringland for joining us in qualifying the Clark of the course. He's got some work to do now and sort everything out. And uh, Rich Hayden, Mike Lau, and uh, anyone that's put all the work into this championship, uh, a big, big thank you, especially to the, the drivers and also the families who are obviously supporting all the drivers in their homes with their working environment. From uh, Martin Jones, who's been in, alongside me in the Coventry Box today, and myself, Richard John Neal, wishing you a safe and pleasant week. And we look forward to your company next weekend when we'll be racing on the Snetterton circuit. So thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye for now.